You. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's poppin'? What's good? What's good, everybody? What's going on? It's your boy, Mr. Locario and Miles Cunningham in the building. What's poppin'? What's going on, Miles? What's good with you? Trying to stay alive, nigga. What's going on with you? <laughs> shout, out, shout out to you, man. That's all you got to do, man. And shout out to the to the to the legend ARC Alan Roger Curry. Man, shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Listen, I was I, I heard the news earlier this morning. You know, I was to be honest, I was like, I was I was kind of feeling some type of way. I feel like I I lost the uncle. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, but shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Who we got up in the chat? We got a uh, shout out to my dude, uh, 1990 player, I am motivation, Ronnie Granades. Uh, he's a core. What's going on? Uh, Twiz, Twiz did what's going on? AR, Moda King, She OG, remembering Alan Roger Curry. Oh, we got already got the, 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 um, the screen names already and shit. That's what's up. Uh, yeah. Chris 97, Big 23, Ray, M Bay, uh, Deniston. Um, Anderson, the Paul nine five five nine. Shout out to Casual Germ. Shout out to uh, Big O. Uh, shout out to uh, who else we got up in here? Dean twenty three. Shout out to Soul Monger, uh, Sir Lancelot. Slide. We got a lot of people up in here. Shout out to Joe Blast in the motherfucking building. <laughs> shout out to Iceberg S in the building. Shout yeah. out to April MC in the motherfucking <laughs> building. Shout out to G Dog. What up? What up? Shout out to everybody in the chat. And I, I pinned at the top of the chat, right? Um, ARC's book, Mode One. So make sure you guys support ARC. Get his books. Get all his his stuff. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that shit goes around. And and make sure you guys start posting his his links, his stuff. You know, yes, clipping his shit. Clip his videos, all that other shit. You know what I'm saying? Post all that shit around. And in honor of ARC, I'm gonna do this. All right, exactly, because he always show the show the uh, the drinks and shit and all that facts. <laughs> facts. But uh, but before we get into all of that, let's uh show the Game Kings trailer. You know, dedicate this to the Game King ARC. You feel what I'm saying? And be back in a second. Let's go. Let's Everybody do has game. The thing is, though, is your game weak or is your game strong? See, that's the difference. See. Having weak game is synonymous with having no game. But you have game, you have a strategy to get what you want, but your strategy might be weak. I always tell these guys, snap your fingers. And I'll tell them, snap your fingers. I'm like, you hear that sound? They're like, I'm like, what is that sound? Bitch, that's a 17 year old that just turned 18. That's a 19 year old that just turned 21. They are just, turn they, they, they're everywhere. Hi, how you doing? You think I give a fuck about how you doing, bitch? All I want you to motherfucking do is open your mouth and say something so I can hear how your voice sounds so it can tell me how the fuck to get at you. Your feelings are not facts. Because you feel like whatever you feel like, you can't get me to believe that there's more than two genders. You understand what I'm saying? And truthfully, I'm not sorry because I can't, I can't really make facts out of your fucking feelings. Matter of fact, fuck your feelings. There's only two genders. Only two genders. You trying to tell me that genders are neutral and niggas is trying to come up with 92 fucking genders, bro. There's this narrative now that it's okay for a man to cry and it's really pushing this sensitivity, express yourself, express your feelings. One thing I've always respected about my father growing up, I never seen my dad cry. Me and him would get into arguments, we would go at it, we would fight. I would say the harshest things to him I could to hurt his feelings, but I never broke him. Shoot, just the right pair of shoes get your dick sucked. Just the right pair of shoes. Women don't. Like, seriously, you could be, you could look like Boris Cujo. You'd be six foot eight. You know, have a print down to your knee. They look at those shoes. They bust. They just like, oh no, not him. Nah, but, but the bitches shine because of the nigga. Period. Like, and 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 when it's functioning correctly, that's the way it is. So, on that on that note. Dick is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. And you got to play your way from start to the end. That's having game. Because if you do that, what you expect is what's going to happen. 
See, don't no accidents happen with motherfuckers that got game. To get. Yeah. We are back. So, yeah, man, we just wanted to know, talk about the importance of direct game. And definitely shout out to OG, Alan Roger Curry, because, you know, Alan Roger Curry's mode one mm-hmm. brand was what really brought a lot of light to direct game and letting guys understand about being upfront, straightforward to women and letting women know what you want and just being upfront and straightforward in life and just, you know, being a more honest person. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I think a lot of people just didn't, they, they, they didn't get it. Yeah. I think Alan Roger Curry was ahead of his time in a lot of ways because there were certain people who still didn't get it, which is why ARC had to keep reiterating himself all the time. And it was funny because I'll watch him and he sometimes would get frustrated. Yeah. People wouldn't get it. He's like, yo, what the, you know what I mean? But what's interesting about it is this, is that, and what made me really gravitate to what he was saying was because when I would hear Alan Roger Curry speak, I'm like, yo, I get it. You understand? Because the thing is, I remember uh, it was a few years ago um, when he was on blog talk radio and he invited me to be a guest on his show. And we had like the, it was a long ass show. It It was me, him and this one other lady and um, it was probably like a four or four and a half hour show. It was, it was a minute. You feel what I'm saying? And so when he he asked me, he was like, you know, uh, when when was the time that you were mode one with a woman? You understand? And at the time, I wasn't really even that familiar with mode one like that. You understand what I'm saying? But then what was interesting was when he was talking about it and explaining it. And I was like, yeah. So I was like, yeah, I used to do this. This is certain things that I used to do. So when he was talking about it, I got it. And so what I want you guys to understand is, is that when you're out here in the game, things start to make more sense to you. You see what I mean? And it's like the 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 being direct is so simple. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, yo, just let the chick know what's on your mind, what you want to make happen, and you make that happen. But the thing about being direct and why it's so why it's so important in the game, right? Is because it basically gets you to the point where you're not scared to actually be you you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? you're not scared to let people know what it is you're not scared to be honest you understand because you're directly letting someone know what it is so when it comes to or pertaining to you dealing with women right what it is is that it lets the woman know exactly what you're about what you want what you want to do and then it also gives her a chance to respond to what you're saying because mm-hmm. we always talk about you guys leading where he's talking about you guys, you know, uh, letting a chick know what it is so that she can respond and see if she's going to cooperate. Right. And what was good about what Alan was teaching, he was teaching you how to identify women who are going to waste your time, how to identify the women who are going to really be about it. You feel what I'm saying? And the thing is, is that once you become well versed in this game, all of that stuff just starts to make more sense to you. You feel what I'm saying? And what I loved about Alan was he would always stick to what he was saying and doing and reiterating that regardless. Like he didn't switch up for nobody. He was like, listen, this is what it is. If you don't get it, what it's it's on you. You feel what I'm saying? It's on you. Miles, what's your thoughts on all that that shit though? Well, you know, I want to say that, uh, you know, speaking of the Game Kings documentary, Mm -hmm. Alan Roger Curry was supposed to be on the Game Kings documentary. Mm -hmm. You understand? (laughs) But but I'll say this. I ain't going to get into the details and anything like that, but I'll say this. Alan Roger Curry is the type of nigga that knows who he is so much so right. that if it means he can't be on Game Kings, right? Mother, he just can't. Look, the nigga is so about what he's about. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like he really don't care. Like his, and he's one of the reasons why you know him. Him being one of the guys in this game is one of the things that inspired me mm-hmm. to create something like the masculine identity membership. Right. You understand because. When you when you hang around like certain people, like when you when you when you're when you know guys like Lucario, mm-hmm. you know guys like ARC, you know guys like Boss Mac and Rosebud, Steve the Dean, mm-hmm. even uh, uh Tariq Nashid, right? Mm-hmm. Right. One thing I noticed was that each and every one of these niggas mm-hmm. had a specific identity. Mm-hmm. I couldn't lump, even though all everybody spit game and all that shit. I still couldn't lump any one of these niggas together. 
Right. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it, it, there's no way I could I could literally put them in the same box necessarily. Mm. And and you know, so shout out to ARC because we reached out to him to be on the documentary, and he he laid out what what he needed, right? And it just it just couldn't like work out logistically, and so we couldn't get it to happen. But it was the type of thing where where both me and Lucario was like, shout out to Gucci, like you know what I'm saying, like exactly, right? You know, it, it had it was it wasn't like I mean we were disappointed that we couldn't get him on, but at the same time it's like well. At least he know exactly what the fuck he about. Right, exactly. You understand? Like it wasn't no half stepping. It wasn't no double talking. Mm. It was, he just laid his shit out. It was like, yo, this is what I require. This is what I need. Blah 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 blah. And we was looking at him like, yeah, it ain't gonna work that way. And he was like, well, right. And that's it. And and, and the funny part is, well, after yeah. that, we still was cool. Everything was all good. Exactly. So exactly. Was there, and, that, and that's how men operate. Exactly. That's exactly. how men operate. And that's what I. That's what I liked about it is that. See what what a, what guys got to get from from Alan Roger Curry is <laughs> understanding that look this is who I am this is my identity and this is what I do regardless of societal pressures regardless of what society is saying that I should do or ho- or who I should be because the thing about mode one is this right is that it's not what people would consider socially acceptable right mm. and and but what happens is, is that because you have a good understanding of women and how things go down and a a good understanding of yourself you understand how good mode one is you understand how it works you understand why it's needed and it's necessary and understanding that mode one was alan roger curry's brand of direct you know game you feel what i'm saying which he he basically promoted so that people could understand what it is and broke it down so simply that you can understand what it is to make sure that you can get what you want Mm. and the thing is this when we talk about direct game right what it is is that it's really about you saving time it's about you identifying the women who really want to be about what you're about and it's 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 about you getting rid of the time wasters (laughs) you feel what i'm saying who are going to waste your time and the attention whores. Exactly, exactly. And so the thing is, is that what it does is that it teaches you to believe in yourself, be more confident, mm-hmm. and go out there and go after what you want. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? So that's what it is, man. But shout out to my dude, Alan Roger Curry, man. I mean, the, the I'm telling you. Hey, my favorite, my favorite joint that he did was um that audio book called uh, "Ooh, Say It Again." Right. That's my shit. Mm-hmm. That's like my favorite shit from him. I I have that. I still have that on my um on my Audible uh app, and I listen to it from time to time. Like that shit. You want to talk about like because all y'all niggas be oh how do I improve my uh my mouthpiece and what do I say to a girl? Listen to that fucking book. It's called Ooh Say It Again and mm-hmm. some shit some shit. Let me let me look at it. But it's it's a really good book about like how to approach women verbally and. And because it, it's a part of his mode one brand, but he was but he was getting into how to respond to to women, but, you know, because a lot of y'all dudes is like <clears throat> when we tell y'all that you could go up to a girl and mm-hmm. say, I want to fuck. Y'all right. be looking at us like we crazy. Right. Exactly. exactly. But, but but the cool part is, is that <clears throat> Alan Roger Curry shows you exactly how to make this type of approach. Mm-hmm. In this book, who say it again? You understand what I'm saying? And the, you know the thing with ARC is that he he really like he really had it in his mind that that he was that dude. Exactly. So he wasn't the, he wasn't he wasn't like y'all dudes. Mm-hmm. Y'all worry about what a bitch think of you only five minutes after meeting her. Exactly. You understand? Like he's already looking at the bitch and thinking of how many ways he could bend her up like a fucking pretzel and how much she would enjoy it. That's what he's thinking. Hmm. Right. He's not, he's not the, like the average dickhead that's like, oh, my God, I wonder if she'll, she'll think I'm a cool guy because of my jawline. Right, like, exactly. He, no, no, he's like, yo, I could fucking, I could put this bitch's leg behind her ear and dog fuck the shit out of her, and mm-hmm. she'll like it. Mm-hmm. That's what he's thinking as he approaches a woman. That's the type of confidence. That's the type of, that's mode one for y'all, mm-hmm. for y'all niggas. And, and y'all niggas is still worried about, yo, I had, I did two different discords today. Mm-hmm. And both, I had two different dudes hit me up on the Discord asking. So I've been with a girl for a couple of months. Now she's asking me if I can communicate more with her. What should I do? Wow. And I'm thinking to myself, 
And and oh, and they always preface it by saying, I've been with her for a few months and she listens to everything I say and everything's perfect. Mm. So if she listens to everything you say and everything's perfect and you've been with her for three to four months, right? Right. I think the other guy said said like two months or some shit, whatever. But they basically said the same shit. What do I do? What the fuck you mean? What do you do? Right. You keep doing what the fuck you doing? Exactly. It's like as soon as a as soon as a bitch cough, y'all niggas is ready to jump out the window. Mm-hmm. You understand? As soon as a chick scratches her face, what's the matter, honey? Is everything okay? Do you need anything? Oh my god, do I need to change how I'm doing? What do I need to change my leadership? Do I need to stop doing what I'm doing? Do I need to cut my balls off just for you, baby? No. Right. That's why. That's why. Like, like a part of me dies every time one of these one of our OGs die. Mm-hmm. A part of me dies every time one of our OGs die because that's one less dude that we can look to to mm. prove to y'all niggas that y'all don't need to give a fuck what other people think. Exactly. That's a fact. That's a fact. Because, yo, I, I swear when I heard the news, I was like, fuck, because it's like, see, see, the thing is, is that I related to this motherfucker so much. It was like, it's like when I was listening to him, listening to him talk, it was like I was hearing my own mind. You understand what I'm saying? I was like, he knows, he knows what it is. I get, like, I understand this. I, because every time he would say shit, see, this is the funny part, right? I remember Alan Roger Curry had a story about him uh, being, I think it was at a grocery store. He was getting head from some chick that he told to suck his dick, right? Mm-hmm. And, and some of y'all probably know that story, right? The funny part is, is that there's certain dudes who didn't believe him when he said that, right? But when I first heard the story, I was like, yup. I was like, I, I was like, exactly. Like, I wasn't like, oh my God, that's crazy. What are you talking? I under I understood that because I've been in similar situations. Right. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is a lot of times when even when guys be talking about receipts and shit, it's like a dude who understands game don't need a receipt. Exactly. Because because when you say something, I'm like, yes, I know what you're talking about because I've been through the same shit. I've been through similar situations and circumstances. I've been through similar things where I see women act this way and be this way. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is what happens is, is that when you, this is why I think Alan Roger Curry was ahead of his time because most dudes game wasn't stepped up to the point where they could even relate to what he's saying in that sense to even believe that type of stuff happens. You see what I mean? And so this is the thing where this is why Alan Roger Curry had to keep repeating himself because a lot of guys really didn't gravitate it or get it because they were not at that level. And that's okay. If you're not at the level, it's it's okay. But the thing is you have to listen and you have to learn because the thing is this, right? If a lot, I, I used to hear a lot of guys say, I don't understand this mode one stuff. And I'm like, well, see, he explained it simply. He was like, look, it's not even about trying to just get laid or to, to, you know, be able to hook up with girls or whatever it is like that. He said, look, I'm teaching you how to identify the women who are time wasters, who are going to be manipulative to you, because if you're up front, they can't play those games with you. Right. You see what I'm saying? And it, and it makes perfect sense. So the thing is, is that the ones who are really about it and who really fuck with you, they gonna fuck with you because you you laying it out right there. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. And guys, uh, remember today, uh, you don't have to donate to call in. What I want you guys to do is I, I pinned at the top of the chat a link to Alan Roger Curry's books on Amazon and stuff like that. So go there, uh, cop a book, support. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh, Alan Roger Curry and get that get that shit cracking. You feel what I'm saying? He, he, still, he still got a wife and a kid and all that shit. And we, we got calls and they'll be ready too. Oh, yeah, yeah. We could go to the call. So let's, right. let's go in. All right. So we got a uh, 484 484. You're on live with Lucario and Miles. Name Agent City. And did you buy a book from ARC? What's going on, Lucario? What's going on? <laughs> What's up? What up? No, I haven't bought the book yet, man. You, you ain't buy the book. The one thing we no. asked you to do, you ain't yeah. buy it. You ain't do it. The one thing we asked you to do, you ain't do it. You got to do it. As soon as you get off the phone, do it. Get get a, get a copy of the book, man. Uh, <laughs> yo, you got you look. Look, you got to support the game, bro. You have to support the fucking game, man. No, of course, yeah, nah. okay, all right, all right. I was all right. actually about to donate, but then yeah, don't donate. Yeah, Go man. buy a book from so, ARC, man. Support right. the fucking game. He still right. get, he still got family yeah, here. Man. He got a wife and kid yeah, here, man. and, and we are gonna do what we could do. You feel me? Right. But what's the question though? Oh sure, man, for sure. So, okay, I'm sure you guys uh, dealt with women in the past that 
or Mm -hmm. act vindictive and spiteful because you charge them to the game and stop paying them no mind. I mean, you know, basically stop paying attention to them. So Mm -hmm. what would you guys recommend for a situation like that when, you know, you have maybe one particular chip uh, chick or a group of chicks who are, again, just being spiteful and doing things to basically try to get your attention and it doesn't seem to stop because, you know, you're hoping that at some point, you know, the girl will get the hint that, hey, you know, I'm not really looking to move the situation forward. Uh, but a lot of times, is you know, they just continue to persist and persist. And Give me an example, though. Give me an example of something yeah. spiteful they're doing. Uh, so... I mean, this is something extreme, but let's say you had a girl that you were fucking with, you know, you start ignoring her and she scratches your tires, right? Oh. I mean, that's something extreme, um, but it could be something as simple as maybe going to a friend of yours who, you know, somebody who they know you associate with mm-hmm. and talking shit about you, you know, behind your back and saying bad things about you, those kind of things. Okay. And so, um, so you're saying, how do you deal with that? I'm saying, like, how, what would you guys recommend as, as to, like, how? Like, like how to, how to how move? Basically. Well, this is the thing. Well, I would say this. This, this is the first thing. The first thing you got to do just in these situations is to prevent these type of situations from happening. So a lot of times these situations might right. occur because you were doing something beforehand that causes the woman to be prompted to feel getting her feelings to even do this in the first place. So when you were saying the example of, Oh, you know, you ignore the girl and she slashes your tires, right? See, the thing is, is that to ignore a woman usually means you are giving her unwarranted attention. You see what I'm saying? You, 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 you see what I'm saying? Call her, call her, call her. Where did you, where did you meet? Okay. This is happening to you right now, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, where did you meet this bitch? So, okay, here's the thing, man. Yeah, yeah, you see? No, 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 stop right there. Stop right there. No, 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 no. Let me explain something to you. Stop right fucking there. You see the, you see, here's the thing. Let me explain. No, 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 stop. Let me explain something to you, bro. You can be quiet, bro. We got you. We got you. Got you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Got you. All of that. See, here's the thing. Let me explain. Mm. You see all of that, all of that shit of how you can't answer a question directly. That already lets me know that you're weak and flexible. So if I can tell that you're weak and flexible over the phone, that bitch who's slashing your tires and doing fucked up disrespectful shit detected your flexibility early, my nigga. Mm. She already knew that she could disrespect yeah, that, you. I mean, I was just giving an example. No, no, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't care. All right. Well, give us a real example of what she's doing to you then, as if it matters. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but it's annoying. That's that's the thing. So right. Because she knows like she can stop. annoy you. All right. Fine. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is your demeanor and, and how you show up in any given situation, it is. Can it can dictate your entire fucking uh, fate moving forward? Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you or no? Repeat that one more time, Miles. I mean, I, I don't. The I'm way not, look, not. look, 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 look. The way you're showing up in this conversation right now, I can already tell that you have a lot of weaknesses mm-hmm. about your masculinity. Okay. Okay. I'm letting you know that subconsciously. There, I can't, I can't, you can't go past a certain level of respect with me during this conversation. And I'm not saying that to insult you. I'm trying to show you how things work in the animal kingdom, even between humans. You understand? Yeah, I understand. So, so when I ask you a, a, a question and then you, you come off with a, uh, well, you see, here's the thing. Um, I, you know, let me explain because, well, it's a long story, man. That's it doesn't matter, matter, bro. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's up to you to represent yourself, no matter how fucked up the story is. Right. It's up to you to say. No, no, no. I'm saying it's long. You know? It doesn't you know? matter, bro. It doesn't matter. It and doesn't it matter that matters. it's a long story. You still show up how you show up. 
How, why do y'all niggas jump to fucking excuses all the time? Mm-hmm. Don't you understand what I'm saying to you? It doesn't know, bro. It don't matter how long the story is. It's how you sound when you start to talk. You don't get that? No, I get that. I get that for sure. Okay, so does it really matter how long the story is? Does it really matter how many details? Does there, does anything matter unless you show up like a fucking man? I see what you're saying. I got you, Miles. I got you. Okay, okay. where did you meet this bitch? Okay, so I met this girl at my job, right? And... Wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. Ho, ho, ho. Is she was she a customer or does she work at your job? Is she a co-worker or a customer? No, she she's a co-worker. Jesus. <laughs> wait, hold on, hold on, call her. Wait, 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 wait. Call, I gotta do something to you. Shout out to Alan Alan Roger Curry. Insert dog face here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. So you better at work, all right? Sure, sure, right. Um, yeah, and you know, typically, again, we're talking about a work situation. So your love life and your work life should not really be combined. So because of that, right, for a really long time, I'm talking about six months. Uh, ever since she started working there, like I really did not interact with her at all. Uh, but then I started noticing that a lot of my coworkers, you know, we'd be constantly talking about this shit because she's pretty, she's attractive, and everybody would always be trying to come up to her, you know, mag, da da da. But I started noticing that a lot of people were just beating around the bush and not really getting to the point. So one day I decided that, hey, you know, I'm going to go ahead and shoot my shot, see what happens, you know, just be direct. And instead of, you know, tiptoeing like a lot of these motherfuckers, I'm just going to go ahead and be direct and see what happens, right? So I did that. Everything went smoothly. And from that point on, you know, me and this girl, every single time we would see each other, there would be a lot of flirting, you know, a lot of sexual tension getting built. Uh, But then the more I got to know her, I started realizing that there were certain things about her character that I I was just not really resonating with. So the second I started catching on to those things, that's when I made the the choice that, hey, like, I'm not really fucking with this chick anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and um ignore her and like i didn't really have to explain myself to her as to why i did that because i didn't feel like there was any need to do so so when i started distancing myself again i was just hoping that she would get the hint that i was not interested did in, you, you smash know, anything with her did you smash but, what's up did you smash no i didn't, I didn't. wait so I what was all this what was all this getting to know her and what was all this sh- shooting your shot directly and all this what was all that <sighs> Like he doesn't even hear it. He doesn't even hear it. You don't even hear where when I ask you a fucking a, a, a critical question, you go. Ah. <laughs> wait, so so caller, so caller, you was hold on, hold on. So wait, caller, you was hollering at this chick, flirting with her, doing all this other, doing all this other stuff, and then you just I mean, it's just for fun though, man. You know, I mean, it's work again. So it's a slippery slope. You know what I mean? So again, it was just more of just me playing around, but I wasn't really taking the situation seriously. Oh, so, oh, oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you went, you saw all these other niggas beating around the bush and you, you said that you're going to go up and shoot your shot directly. So you went up and shot your shot directly on one hand, but on the other hand, you was just playing around. I just wanted to see if. No, 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 no. Let's listen to what you said, homie. Let's listen to what I'm going to teach y'all motherfuckers how to express yourselves because y'all, y'all going to stop doing this bullshit. Y'all going to stop telling on yourselves. And then I'm when I call mouth. it out, then when I call it out, you try to backtrack. So you, you went directly and shot your shot because everybody else was playing around and pussyfooting and beating around the bush. So you went directly and shot your shot. Right. However, you was just playing around mm-hmm. because it was a work thing. So do you see the weakness and the flexibility now? Uh, I mean, I don't know, Miles. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hear you out, man, because I'm really trying to soak up the game. Caller, 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 caller. This is the, this is the issue. This is the issue, right? Everything you do matters. Mm-hmm. You understand? So you can't do something and then say, well, 
I was just playing when I did it, so it doesn't count. Do you understand what I'm saying? I see. I right? see. Okay. So, so what I'm saying is your actions are <sighs> going to have a reaction. Do you see what I mean? So when the reaction is a certain thing, then you can't then say, oh, but why is she tripping? I was just playing. Mm. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Carla, how old are you again? I'm 21, bro. 21? Mm-hmm. All right. All right, so you told me what, so what so what did she do? So now okay, so you you ignored her and then what what happened? What was this was the issue? So basically every time I would be at work, uh she would always just try to work around my area and put herself around again, the places where I would work at to see if I would go up and approach her. Um and I just wasn't doing it. So again, she would just come around, keep doing it over and over and over and over. And oh, what was she doing though? That's what I'm saying. What was she doing? Like fucking walk past me like three five feet away from me and make it very obvious that she she wanted me to talk to her. What but I just wasn't doing it right. So, <laughs> but, but, but what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is earlier you said an example of if some chick acts crazy and slashes your tires. What did this woman do that was crazy? I'm getting to that right. So that was that's what was happening initially at the beginning. Uh huh. And. My, what I'm thinking is that once she noticed that everything she was trying to do wasn't really, because again, in, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, well, obviously I'm putting myself close to this guy. You know, I'm putting myself uh, close to this guy so that he can come up and, you know, make the approach. But again, I got to a point where I was, I was really not interested in talking to her anymore. So by me ignoring her, again, I, I was hoping that she would get the point. But long story short, like after a while, uh, there started happening other things where, Again, because I'm saying, you know, she, she was an attractive girl, so obviously a whole bunch of other dudes were trying to get at her, and she would, like, grab other co-workers, and whenever there would be times that she would know I would be, like, walking by a particular area or whatever, like, she would stand by there and talk to other people, and then I would catch her, like, looking in the corner to see if I was checking out, like... The okay, so, so wait, so wait, so wait, so wait, wait, wait. So, again, my question is... What is she doing to you? <laughs> <laughs> so, latest thing that I could think of, right? And this is, it, it's so fucking petty, man, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it, right? But, but it's really petty. Um, but I have a, a buddy of mine that I typically go on, on lunch with, right? So, and they just happen to be, they happen to know each other. And from time to time, they also go on lunch together. Mm. Uh, also, in short, I, I was, I had scheduled to go with my friend for lunch, right? Mm -hmm. And we're sitting in the break room. It's time for us to leave. Um, I'm sitting in the break room waiting for him. And then he finally comes around. And I say to him, all right, bro, you know, let's go. And she just happened to be around. And she looked at him and said to him, like, ew. So I'm, I'm not going to say his name, but I'm, I'll say, this is what she said, right? She was like, ew, Brian. And then my coworker looked at her and said, what? And she just looked at him and get, again and said, ew. So in my head, I'm thinking, like, Wow, like was that really necessary? Like making that comment because obviously what she was trying to call her, but call her. Like you're gonna go and hang out with her for call her. I'm asking again, what did she do to you? <laughs> what, what you keep you you started the call saying that if a chick is acting wilding and doing some crazy shit, and the example you gave was like a chick slashing your tires. Like, so what I'm saying is, what did she do? You still haven't told me what she did to you. Huh? I mean, she's just doing. I mean, I I think those kind of things are just very petty. No, no. See, this is what I'm gonna tell you. What's happening? This woman is a woman that you're still interested in, and what happened is, is you feel some type of way that she's not fucking looking at. She's not really wanting your attention anymore, like you like you hope she would. Mm. You know, some type of way because you think she's being passive aggressive to you but if you really didn't give a fuck you wouldn't you wouldn't even care what the fuck she's doing oh my god you said it in the sense of you're just minding your business you ignored her and now she's making your life some living hell like what is she actually doing bro yo were we like this at 21 <laughs>
<laughs> like, what is she doing? She's acting cold, bro, being a bitch, you know. Wait, yeah, acting cold? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait, how is she acting cold when you're just trying to ignore her and mind your business? Right. Because again, bro, like she's going behind people's backs, talking shit about me, saying this and that, making up stories, you know, making rumors of things that are not true. You know what I mean? And again, it's just so, so Wait, hold on, hold on. She's making up rumors about you about what? Like what? Saying things like, oh, you know, he's just upset because uh, like he wanted me and I didn't want him. And so I had to turn him down and that's why he hates me and all this and that. When in reality, it's not the case whatsoever. So, you know, and so what? What What does that do? A, what, 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 so what does that do? A, say, how does that hurt you? In any way, man. But what I'm saying is like, what? It doesn't affect you in any way. It doesn't affect you in any way, but it made you call us today. How? How? I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, because again, it's. I mean, because it's it's all going right now. And my thing is, again, I really don't give a fuck, bro. Oh, but you really I don't. Find it petty. So why are we? To, why? Okay, give wow, us. Really? All right. So call us. Call us with the question that you really I'm called so in about. Call us I'm with so the thing you really about. called in about because it doesn't affect you in any way, and you don't give a fuck. So call us and ask us the question you really wanted to ask. Uh, what I said initially before I had to break down the sto whole story, which is what would you guys recommend when you're dealing with, again, it doesn't have to be. I would, uh, I would recommend that you put your head down, situation. you put your head down, do your work and stop fucking with bitches at your fucking job. That's what we told y'all. Right. And okay. on top of that, stop, stop worrying about some, some chick that you don't, you don't give a fuck about. And that don't give a fuck about you. Like, why are you, why are you even worried? Are you worried? About okay. Like what is her what is her saying shit about you gonna do to you in at work? Nothing really, but my thing is, you know, this is not the first instance where I've had something like this occur to me. Because you and because you always try to fuck with bitches times. at your job, right? You you fuck with bitches at your job before, right? No, nah, bro. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. This is actually the first and last time I'm doing this. Cause so wait, wait, wait. But I, you just I, said I you said this is not caller. I'm only going off of what you said, bro. You just said this is not the first time. Mm -hmm. So that would lead us to believe that you have fucked no, no, with no, bitches at your job before. Huh? No, bro. I said this is the first and last time. That's what I said. This is the first and last time. Well, if this yeah, is the first and last right. time, then you have absolutely nothing to worry about, bro. Just right. go to work. Keep your head down. Do your fucking job. Go to fuck home. Stop fucking with bitches at your job. Okay. Right. And the original question, though, what would you guys? I, I just want to answer to like the question. What's I mean, the whole time, all I did was tell the story. You guys, what's the, all right, all right, what's the original I mean, question again? What's the original question again? Feedback. What's the original question again? How okay, would you? So if you got a girl that's acting I, again, I'm not saying this is pertaining to me or my particular. Okay, situation. just if you got a girl, let's go ahead. Right? If you got a girl if, that that is being vindictive and spiteful uh -huh. towards you, uh -huh. what would you guys recommend in order to stop that kind of behavior from that woman, right? Because ultimately, I mean, you can't control what she's going to do, but... But call her, call her. This is, what I, this is what I was trying to explain to you. Let me let me explain something to you. I'm, I'm literally twice your age. I'm 41, right? I have never in life, not one time, even, even when my game was weak as fuck when I was around your age, I've never, not one time in life had a woman be vindictive and spiteful towards me. Facts. Not one time. Not one time. Do you understand what I'm saying? And now I've had friends who've had women who were vindictive and spiteful. And you, you know what all of them had in common? They were playing games with the woman. Tell me. You see what I'm saying? So don't play games with the chick. And you won't have this happen. So the, I understand the question you're asking, but understand the question you're asking does not happen unless the man puts that in motion. Exactly. Like women don't just act vindictive and spiteful okay. to random niggas for no reason. It's usually a backstory. You understand? It's just like, you know, when, when you be in the street, like, let's say some, like, let's say, for example, uh, uh, you know, somebody is in the street, right? And a dude jump out the car run into a spot and shoot somebody dead in their head and then walk out. Mm. Nine times out of 10, that's not random. Nine times out of 10, he had beef with that nigga. You understand what I'm saying? There was something going on between them two. It wasn't no random shit. So that's what I'm trying to tell you with this particular situation is that a lot of times what happens is, is that what you're talking about happens as a result 
of what you were doing beforehand. Mm. This is what I'm saying. Okay, I got you. <laughs> right. so, as long as you're doing, as long as you're not being yeah. on no bullshit, you feel what I'm saying? Then you ain't got nothing to worry about nine times out of ten. Yeah, so you was yeah, going, what you was going to say? Well, Go ahead. I, think, I, I hear what you guys are saying, but again, okay, so my question is, let's say you have a girl who is, you know, has a really inflated ego. She thinks her shit doesn't stink. She thinks she's a fucking precious guy. Bro, 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 shut the fuck up. Shut up, shut up, shut up, bro, bro, bro. Listen, you see, you see, you're talking to two guys who we don't even give women that much room in our brain. Right. To even know that, to even know or care or even worry about if she think her shit stink or not or all of that, I don't give what. <laughs> what, are you, what? Yo, what are you asking us about a bitch, bro? Like, yo, what the fuck? Is, right, what does all that got to do with anything? Because I think girls like that just don't do like they they can't handle rejection, man. You know what I mean? So what? <laughs> Call her, call her, call her, call her, call her, bro. Call her. Why do you care so much, bro? It's, it's not even about me, can though, bro. But let me like, tell you something. Let me tell you. Let me fucking tell you something. Let me tell you something, bro. You didn't reject that girl, right? You didn't reject that girl. You bullshitted around with that girl, just like the rest of them other dumb niggas at your job, right? The only difference between you and them is probably because you came at her a little bit different. Because you might have watched a couple of our shows and you was like, and you realize what everybody else was doing. And you say, let me just be direct with her. Mm -hmm. And then you probably, you probably, because you set yourself apart just by using a little bit of game, you set yourself apart and maybe she liked you a little Mm -hmm. bit more than the rest of them dickheads at your job. Right. You understand? So now you're in a fucked up situation where because you decided to play with fire, now you're getting burned. Now you're calling us. Mm Mm-hmm. What we're trying to tell you is don't play with fire in the first place. Exactly. And stop being a I fucking mean, I'm stop that. being a fucking half ass nigga. Mm-hmm. Stop being a half ass nigga. If you go holler at the bitch and put your bid in, then be ready to go all the way through with the bid, nigga. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You one of these fucking politicians that's you one of these politicians talking about lowering taxes and then when and when you get elected, taxes go up. Right. And then you mad, you mad when the voters don't like you no more. Exactly. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I see. I how, how many other ways you want to ask the fucking question, nigga? Come again. Come again. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about, oh, well, if it, how do you how do you deal with a girl who who act like her shit don't stink? None of these bitches think they shit stink. Mm hmm. That's a fact. But at the same time, I don't give a fuck what a bitch think. Because mm-hmm. once she get on my once she get on my team, and none of that shit matters anymore. Exactly. Exactly. What do you what, bro, bro? All right, I'm gonna leave you with this. I'm gonna leave you with this. Don't stop letting stop thinking about women who are not on your team. If they're not on your team, you shouldn't be thinking about them, bro. Go to work, do your job, and go to fuck home. Stop fucking with bitches at your fucking job. We right. told y'all this. Bro, that's, that's, mm-hmm. bro, bro, that's the type of energy I'm on. And again, you know, again. All right, listen, 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 listen. I got three other I got three other calls on the line, bro. I really we can't we can't continue to this because this we we talking in circles now. Yeah, all right. Yo, go buy the book. Go buy the book from Alan Roger Curry, bro. Go buy it. You need it. You need it, nigga. Exactly. That's the fact. Peace to Curry, man. All right, man. Peace, bro. Peace. Take it easy, man. I'm out of here. All right, peace. Appreciate you, bro. Jesus fucking. Were we like that at 21? I don't know, man. I'm just like. Damn. (laughs) Yo, oh my God. Anyway, so we got uh, 310. 310, you're on live with Lucario and Miles. Name, agent, city, and go go buy a book from Alan Roger Curry. And Jay, can you hear me okay? I'm in, uh, I'm in Europe right now in Spain. Yeah, uh, we, can, we can hear you. What's good? We can hear you, Jay. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I, I bought all of his books as audio books, and I was a Patreon. Okay, that's what's I, up. I had his highest, highest tier for coaching as well. Nice. That's what's up, man. Ooh, cool. All right. So let's go with you. So, so this call this call is more like a tribute and uh, and also to say you know some important things I learned from him, but also Lucario. Mm. Uh, I really I really respect 
and appreciate a lot of the advice that you give because uh, Alan Roger Curry is amazing when it comes to, you know, the talk dirty to me, verbal seduction. Mm. And, you know, he tried to put his own swing on things with mode one and, you know, uh, saying what your intention is up front and stuff like that. Uh, as I, as I worked with him, uh, I, I, I always had a lot of success with girls because, uh, looks, uh, confidence and just, uh, being very much leading and direct, uh, with my body language or what I wanted. And, uh, uh, so I, I had already, I had, I had sex with, uh, I don't know how many, but I know over 500 girls by the time I even started working with Alan, mm. but I didn't have a verbal game when it came to uh, talk dirty skills mm. and um, and I used to think game was just having sex with beautiful women mm. I had a lot of and and I started to use his verbal skills and seduction I thought it was so much fun because you get into the whole talk dirty to me thing you start you start going up to a girl you start saying you know yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna kiss your neck and go down kiss your nipples make them real hard kiss down around your belly until I get down to your clit I won't do <laughs> Oh, and I take my big, uh, take my big heart. Uh, 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 girls like that, right? And uh, it's amazing because you know the girls. They just say, uh, when I start doing that, the girls look at me and say, "You must be really confident to, to talk to me like that." Right. And then, and I would just, uh, you know, I just, I just gauge and I would just talk like that. I would, and I, I, I go up to the girls. And I you know, talking close to them in their ear with eye contact. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I would just, I would just say stuff like, you know, a lot of questions is what I did too. Like, uh, like you like, you like the fuck, don't you? You want my dick and you're pussy, don't you? Mm -hmm. (laughs) No, I don't say, I don't say bitch, but I say, say it. And she's like, I want you to fuck me. I say, say you want my cock and your pussy right now. And she's like, I want my cock and your pussy. And she just wants to and I did, I did lecture, and I just started having so much fun with this, you know, right. you see, like Miles said, we say it again, a little bit about that. But when you work with him one on one, he goes into more you know, depth and, and other things, too. Mm. But the thing is, is that it's amazing because it's like it's almost like when you know so much game already, you just pick up girls and have sex. This new verbal trick was amazing to me. Uh, and especially I traveled the world. I've been to over like around 50 countries and I, I was in a lot of countries where girls didn't speak English like Japan or wherever. And I would fuck them with nonverbal. I would just walk up to them, eye contact, you know, the sexual vibe, put my hand out and people say, how did you have sex with all these girls? They don't even speak English. I say, I put my hand out. She put hers in mine. I walked her to my hotel and I fucked her. You know, you could lead nonverbally too. Right. And ARC actually did talk about that a lot too. He said his reading body language. It's mm-hmm. it's reading all this stuff. And but the verbal seduction skill is so much fun to do. You can speak English and the person can understand it, you know? And I really loved it because when you got that vibe and you got that tone, you can just talk like and just riff on that, man. It's just so much fun. <clears throat> so that's the biggest thing. AR, ARC is cool, man, because like that that stuff was just so cool, man. I didn't understand that how to how to talk dirty like that. You can just straight up do it. Mm-hmm. Today I was walking down on the beach today, and at the end of my jog, I went up to a girl who was looking at me sitting on the beach, and I just you know I I first qualified her. I you know say what are you doing here? Or what are you alone? What do you you know how long are you gonna be here, etc. I need I just need, I know the information I need to have to see if I want to you know shoot my shot with her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I said, you know, you have a really good vibe. And then she says, you do too. And then I, and so, you know, I'm doing like mode one, but I'm doing it, you know, and, and I start off kind of like PG and then I go, you know, PG 13. Then I go, you know, R rated, X rated, and then triple X rated. I build it up like, oh, if it's casual like that in a day. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is that, yeah, this girl, you know, within three minutes of talking to this girl on the beach, who was so pretty, man. Uh, you know, we're making out and I'm finger banging here and I'm, I'm touching, uh, right on the, I'm, I'm on the, on the beach and out of nowhere who runs and so she stops, you know, and then she gets in her, you know, we don't, we can't kiss her. I can't keep finger banging because the, these people are walking mm. in, immediately in front of us with the little kids coming over to us. And then she gets out of her head and in her head space. And she, her critical mind's activated. So, you know, she's like, oh, you know, I shouldn't do it and this kind of stuff. And so, you know, sometimes you deal with that, but she, 
came up to me and she was like, with your vibe, you know, I really want to, but you know, I'm, she was from Turkey and she says, I'm from Turkey, you know, and I'm just scared. And, call her, call her, call her, call her. Call her, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, call her. Oh, what, what I want to say is, is that I, I'm glad that you are definitely um, letting people know the, the, you know, the information that you was taught that actually helped you get to that space to where you can do these things. You feel what I'm saying? And, and the thing is, what I want to tell guys out here is that the stuff that he's talking about you know, is, is real. You feel what I mean? And this is the type of shit that you experience and that, that, that happens, you know, when you are well-versed in the game, you know how to talk, you got a good mouthpiece, all of that type of stuff happens, you understand in real life, you feel what I mean? So the thing is, is that, you know, this isn't something that, that, you know, is only, uh, you know, for special type of guys or some shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? any guy could talk and do this and make this happen. You feel what I'm saying? But you got to be able to be the type of guy that's confident and be able to make that shit pop off. But, but caller, we appreciate you calling in my brother. Um, but yeah, man, we appreciate you uh, letting us know that ARC, you know, blessed you with the game. You feel what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, man, uh, that's what's up, man. All right. That's what's up. I want to Okay, go ahead. Well, last word. What you, you say? You want to say? Uh, caller, caller. We we know you're calling in uh, from 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 over there. So we'll we'll give you the last word. Go ahead. Okay, I just want to say something that's really important because here's the thing: is that Lucario, man. You know, you talk about vetting women. I I got your bad boy membership where I got the that program with mm-hmm. vetting the women. Right. And I like your approach and I like your style even better. And I, the reason why I say is because I think it's healthier. I don't think it's healthy. Because you can fuck any girl with these with known game. You can fuck any. You can pretty much fuck most any girl. You can get her pussy wet. You can fuck her. But the thing is, that there's some girls you don't want to get their pussy wet. If you find out the woman's on, if you can, you should be able to learn it. Like kind of like I, I surf. You know, you should be able to read a bad wave or a good wave or right. catch the good wave. Right, right. You have to get good at reading women and understand what a cluster B woman is. Right. Borderline narcissist. Whatever these kind of traits are. The problem I think the ARC system sometimes had is that he was sometimes interested in turning one of these manipulative bitches and fucking them, you know, with the techniques Mm. and then dropping kind of like, no. And I I actually don't think you should reward her with your dick. I think that uh, what I do now is I I turn down more. This is the thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. on. Let me stop you there because, see, (laughs) I don't like when dudes who are sort of learning certain some of these things misconstrue because I, I understand exactly what ARC does. So yeah. what ARC was doing in those situations is called seduction. So what happens is, is when you seduce a woman and, and, you know, I talk about this in bad way membership too, but I can get a little bit more deeper into this later on. The seduction of a woman is different than dealing with a woman who ARC would call like a reciprocate, like a reciprocate is a woman who's just really about it right now. Cause she's highly interested. in That's a high interest woman. A a woman that you seduce is a woman who has either medium or low interest in you. So what happens is that there's still interest there, but you know how to take it from there to a higher level. You see what I'm saying? And so that that's what he's really talking about. It's not necessarily rewarding a, a bitch with your dick. It's seducing a woman to get her from medium to higher interest. Now, the way that you do that or the reason you would do that is because the woman is giving back what you're putting down. So when it comes to seduction, you're given a little and then she's giving back some more. So then you give her a little bit more. You feel what I'm saying? But you don't reward a woman who's on some bullshit all the way through. So mm-hmm. that, that's the difference when it comes to, yeah. to the actual yeah. seduction. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, my caller, we appreciate your call, my brother. Um, we got, I know we got a few more calls in there, so we got to get some more people, but we appreciate you, brother. All right. All right. So we got 337, 337. You're on live with Lakari and Miles, name, age, and city. And did you buy a book from ARC? What's up? What's up? What's up? This is Madre, Dre for short, Madre all day, um, 26th last year at Louisiana. And uh, the book situation, that's what I was calling about, man. I'm calling to give my condolences to ARC the Great, man. Yep, yep, and, uh, yep. At the, at, the, at the end of the day, man, uh, ARC is actually the reason I'm actually over here and I'm under you and Miles and it's just it's 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 crazy, man. I actually found out the uh, I, I found the information out this morning off a, a short that you made, Miles. 
talking about ARC had passed, and right. I'm like, oh my god, man, it's it's it, 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 it's 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 something, man. It, it it's a little hurt. You okay, know? hey, just you but, know what um, you know what you could do. D tell us one important lesson you learned from ARC. Man, I I'll run y'all a story, man. I I I got hair, man. You know, I, you know, I be wearing my hats and all that, but under there, I got braids and whatnot. Okay. And I had this braider, man, and I knew she I knew she liked me for a long time, but I just never really been direct with I would just have a braid in my hair. We kept it on a platonic level. Right. But there was this one night, it was this one night that she she came to my house. She just wanted to chill, smoke, you know. So we chilling and smoking in the car and I had just finished watching the ARC episode because I would literally watch them every day before I go approach everything. I'd just be watching before I got on Lucario. Right. And um I wound up actually telling her what I wanted. I told her I wanted her to to suck my dick and Playing a pussy while she's sucking my dick and, you know, bend over, give her some, some, some dick and everything. Just all of that, right? right? She bought a hotel room. She let it happen, man. And it's just like, I'm like, oh, my God. I said, this really works. This really works. <laughs> and it was like, before I knew about game, because I knew game. I knew about game from Friday because when he asked Craig, it was like, man, you ain't got no games. Like, I got all the games. So I knew from that perspective. But mode one was basically, basically, before I knew real game. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So more one kind of led me into the, 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 the real game no theory panel. So I just wanted to, you know, bring that out there. And I also wanted to uh, comment on the first caller. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like this, man. Um, I can I can automatically tell when a caller is not up to par when it comes down to him focusing on himself because he don't stick to the topic. Right. This is a big topic. Uh, it's something that you should focus on when you're calling. You should stick to the topic. I mean, you could put your own points in, but ARC, man, that's a big dog, man. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, like you said, Locario, because I'm part of Bad Boy membership too. I do need to get our masculine identity also, but I'm 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 I'm, I'm behind y'all a hundred percent. But what you said is that the game overlaps. Thanks. And it's things that it, it it's a certain language that you learn to speak, and if you're not speaking that language, it's it's you're gonna be lost until you 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 put your ego and pride to the side and actually learn. Like like Steve says all the time, you have to have a mentor. You have to be a student of the game. You have to want to learn because I, also another thing I said, I, also another thing I heard, a snake is a snake is a snake is a snake. So like you said, and I'm happy you said it, Miles. You can you can flip it. Uh, big it, scratch, however you want to do it, but a lie is a lie. Yep. And until you come to be real with yourself, that's when you can be real with others. And guys with game is going to embrace you and actually teach you. But you can't live lying and think that you can talk to an honest person and they they take you serious. Like we could see clean through the lie. And you said Thanks. it. Like <laughs> I'm like he just don't understand, man. He don't understand that the game is going to overlap. So until you put all that pride and ego to the side and worry about yourself, you're not going to understand. Right. That's a fact. <laughs> I just wanted to say that, man, and I appreciate y'all guys for y'all y'all, y'all patience with everybody because even through those calls, I learned something through the good and the bad. Facts. The people that call that know the game, the people that don't learn, that don't know the game and don't want to learn it. Like, like it's law zero, like he said. Everybody, it's not for everybody, but it's still like when you're in the game, you can always learn from every situation. And I just want to appreciate y'all and, 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 um, uh, you know, I, I do feel like, you know, uh, ARC just now passed, you know, everything down to y'all. You know, you, k -Zag and Lucario, Steve, just every, you know, because, cause, you know, when one dies, another one is born. And y'all been here, but the light is really on y'all, and I'm behind y'all a thousand percent. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. That's what's up. <laughs> All right, so we got a... Uh, 267, 267, you are on live with Lucario and Miles. Name, age, and city. And did you cop a book by Alan Roger Curry? Hey, yo, what's good? What's good? It's Dave G, 35, Philadelphia. All right. And let me tell you something. The first book I got was Mo One. Mm. The second one I got was Who Say It Again. Mm. The third one I got was Possibility of Sex. Mm. And then the, the fourth and final one I got was uh, Beta Male Revolution. I haven't, I haven't uh, listened to the movie. <laughs> That's what's up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Main man is a legend. Listen, listen to me. I actually found you guys from him. Mm. And the, the, w w one of the things I learned, like the, the whole mode one thing was basically, you know, mode one through four, you know, the four uh, forms of communication. Mm. And like you like you was just talking about, Lucario, like he break the shit down so simple. And it's like it's real shit. Like mode one telling, telling them what you really think. You feel me? And right. I even give you a story. Uh, of of a fusion of what 
Miles tour and uh, with, uh, what I learned from Alan Roger Curry. So uh, it was one time I, I was supposed to go, to go on a date with this chick. She ended up flaking. But mm-hmm. I ended up going to the same spot anyway. That's where I learned from Miles. I, I went to the same spot anyway. I knew I knew there was going to be chicks there and all that. It was right. a hooker spot. I ended up going there. Long story short, I met this other chick there with her friend. And when I met the other chick, she actually, uh, you know, like, I. so what, what I did was I basically told her, um, I, I basically told the one girl, listen, I'm, I'm about to use the bathroom. Can you watch my hookah for me? And her friend basically was like, well, yeah, I'm going to the bathroom with you. And I was like, well, I don't even know you. Like, what you talking about? We giggled. I had her giggling and shit like that. Made, long story short, I ended up, I ended up uh, basically telling her what I wanted to do with her. The friend had dipped off. I told her what I, I basically told her, ended up telling her what I wanted to do with her. Mm. How I wanted to see if her lips tasted as good as they look. Mm. I, t- I told her, I said, listen, I said, I'm trying. And she was a little chick. I said, listen, I'm trying to lift them little sexy legs up behind your ears and deep stroking until you come over and over again. And she looked mm-hmm. at me like, what? Like, you know what I'm saying? We, long story short, the, the friend came back. I told the friend what I, what I, basically the same thing I was telling her. She co-signed the shit. Like, girl, you better go ahead and get that dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, that <laughs> shit worked, dog. Like, being direct. Mm-hmm. Yo, that shit, that shit really worked, yo. Like, and, you know, I, I just want to salute salute the man ARC. Listen, man, it's a celebration of his life and, and, and what he led. Like Facts. he left, he, he left, he left a great legacy. Like of real shit, real shit. I love it. Yeah, sir. He Facts. left, he left a legacy of helping men. You know what I mean? Being direct with these women, telling them what you want. And you know what I mean? A lot of times, like when I hear like other dudes come at y'all for being direct, I'm like, man, these dudes are suckers, man, because they really, they still scared. Exactly. To, to say what's on their mind. Exactly. They still scared. Like that's all that is. Like fuck out of here. Y'all y'all pussy with it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And y'all and 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 the and the, mani- the manipulative chicks gonna keep getting y'all for your time, your attention, your money. And yeah. it, it is what it is. Fuck exactly. it. Let it be that way. Exactly. Right? Thanks, for, thanks for taking my call. Appreciate keep you. Keep spitting that game, fella. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. Because yeah. in order to attract pussy, you gotta be the opposite of pussy. You feel me? Exactly. That's a fact. <laughs> Opposites attract. You feel me? Oh shit! All right, bars, nigga. Um, two two four, two two four. You on live with Lucario and Miles, name agent city, and did you buy an ARC book? Hey yo, what's up, guys? It's Emmanuel, twenty one, Jacksonville, and unfortunately, I, I just got off work, but I'm not exactly familiar with who ARC is. Just oh, oh, you need to, it, you but... need to, bro. You need to go get some of his shit. Yeah, go to Amazon.com. Type in the Island Roger Curry, get the books, the audios, all that. You know what all I'm saying? That, all that, son. But what's but what's on your mind though? What's going on? Yeah, guys. So um I, I was I was at the I was at the bar yesterday, um, talking to this forty six year old blonde woman, sexy black dress and shit. Mm-hmm. Told her what I thought about her and said I wanted to get wine with her, but I made the mistake of not coming up with a place simply because like right now I'm living with my parents because I had I just got back from college and so I'm going to be moved, living with her for a little bit until I move out in February. Mm. Uh, so I, I didn't really kind of know, like, and, 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 and one thing about Jackson was a big ass city. So like, I, I kind of want to pick a spot that's even for more, say closer to her, just because I can't be fucking her and my parents shit, you know? So, uh, I just want some insight on what, what, how I should handle it. Cause I scheduled the time. I scheduled what I wanted her to wear. I just didn't have an idea of a place that, I want to go for wine. So wait, okay. So, so did you, okay. So you talked to this girl and set a date already. So I set a date. I told her, Hey, I want you wearing another, some, I want you wearing black on Sunday at six 30. We're going to go for wine, but I didn't have a place. I didn't know. I didn't have a place in mind in okay. my head for getting wine. And ideally it would probably be closer to her simply because I can't be bringing you know, a 46 year old woman back to my mother's place. Yeah. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. So, <laughs> okay. So let me, how old are you again? 21. I'm 21. 21. Okay. So do you bring chicks over to your spot to smash? No, no. It's crazy. Not, not, so not, not, not back home. When I was in college, I did. Okay. So you, so you don't, you don't bring chicks to smash at your place at all. Yeah, no, it's a Christian household. Oh damn! Okay, so all right, so so basically, so where do you smash the women you you get? Where you just go always go to their spot, or do you go to get a hotel? Like what do you do? I'll go to their spot. Yeah, 
either I'll go to their spot. And most of the time, I, and I'll put this out, out there as a disclaimer, I don't, I don't usually go on dates. It's most of the time, like, one day, one meet them and, like, fucking them, like, 20, 30 minutes later mm. type of thing. It's never, like, a type of vibe. Mm. But, um, usually it's either at their place or in the backseat of my car if they're into that. Okay. So, so basically, um, what you can do is this, right? Is that, um, okay. So are you, so you're trying to get some wine with her and smash. Is that what you're trying to do? That's like the, it was the, the plan. Yeah. Yeah. So I want, what well, the reason why I wanted like a date this time specifically, even though I met her at the club or whatever is because like, I really did like the idea of in my mind of like going on a date, having, you know, sexy older woman in a black dress, blonde hair next to me while I'm dripping wine, tasting it off her and shit. So, right. he's trying to live out a lifetime movie or some shit or some fucking some uh fifty shades of gray type of shit. God damn. So, so this this is the thing, bro. This is the thing, right? Now, um, so so did the, the, the chick the chick confirm that she want to see you on Sunday for some wine? Yeah, we we confirmed it right when she was leaving with her friends. She's like, "Hey, I'll see you Sunday for wine." Mm -hmm. I was like, "All right, good." Before kissing, and then you know. Okay, cool. So cool, cool. So this this is what I this is what I would suggest you do, right? Find a you gotta okay, find a place, right? Where that's near to a hotel, right? Now that's your first option. Right. Now, what I would say is you can suggest going back to her spot, right? But there might be situation because you don't you don't even know her living situation. Because sometimes just because you know, um, just because you're talking to a woman who's, you know, older and who has her own place, you still don't know her situation. So her situation could be where she can't take you back to her house for whatever reason. Who the fuck knows? She could have family staying over. She could uh, be she could have a roommate that, you know, has she has an issue with right now. You have no idea. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is find a spot to 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 uh, to take her to get wine near a hotel that you can take her to. Then when you get the wine, suggest going to her place first. And then if that's not available, then take her to the hotel. You get it? So I have an idea of a spot, but there's a motel. Or is there like, does it have to be a hotel? Or, you know, I, yeah. say, I say a hotel is better because motels be looking like shit. You feel what I'm saying? So, so it's better as a hotel. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But they see, that's, that's the type of shit you got to do when you can't bring chicks back to your spot. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, so the thing is like, oh uh, shit, I lost my train of thought. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, so so I could go to a place and then take her to a, a hotel or whatever. Right. However, I'm just like curious, how do I go about like re-reaching out to kind of really edge and stone the plans because they're for Sunday? The reason I didn't choose thir Saturday, Friday or Saturday is because that's when I'm doing prospecting for women, so I don't, I don't go on dates on Friday or Saturday, but so you, wait, what's the question you said? Say that again. So how do I, cause like, how do I reach back out and say, Hey, you know, I know we confirmed plans for Sunday. We're going to do it here. No, you just I, reach out. Just, you just wait, reach wait, 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 did you, did you already set up a date? No, what he, did he, already he, do? he said he didn't set up a place. So he told her, let's meet Sunday at this time for drink for wine. But he said he hasn't figured out a place yet. And he has to tell her what the place is. So he's trying to figure okay. out. Okay, so all you got to do is well, the very next text is for Sunday we are going to meet here. Right, that's it. Okay. Right, that's it. Bro. <laughs> all, right. all right, all right. And then uh, just one last smaller, shorter question. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. recently, the one of the things that I've been noticing when I've been kind of reevaluating re myself and I've been continuous. Continually, continually growing mm. is that I've been noticing myself less enthusiastic when I'm talking to women at the bars and shit like that, mm. even though I'm still trying to get my five -a days in because, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. Mm. Uh, I've, been, I, I've been noticing that, like, now that there's no longer, like, a bragging rights to it, like, oh, you know, because you, you, when I was, like, originally doing it, it was like, oh, bro, I, I, I fuck this chick and this chick. Who, who, do, who would you say that to? Here. Who would you say that to? Oh, I, literally before I had like was learning this shit, I would just be I would be fucking you chicks and bragging to my friends. Who would you so you would, would be, be saying like, this to your friends? Wait, I'm sorry. You would be saying this to your friends. Yeah, but like, yeah. You know, oh, wait, 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 wait. So, 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 so you're so you're you're secretly gay. Then is is that what you're saying? 
It it it, no, it, 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 no, no, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Because what you're saying is, is that the true excitement of fucking women is seeing your male friends' face when you tell them of how you fucked women. So it was never about the women. It's yes. about. Yes. It's about seeing your male friends' faces light up <laughs> when you tell them no, about your I, erotic I, adventures. You closet homo no, no, no. you. I, I, would like, I like to think of it like... Uh, yes. I, I yeah. like, so I enjoy winning? Like I always thought of it like... No, uh, like no, 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 okay, no, like, no, like, no, 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 no. Because even if you enjoy winning i don't i always thought of it as that enjoying winning a man doesn't need any type of applause to win mm -hmm. right a man doesn't need validation from anyone to understand that he's a fucking winner a loser needs validation after a win mm -hmm. yeah and I, was, and I was a loser man that's what i'm saying that's why i came here to learn because i like winning so no. I came here to learn about winning, but I listen, was listen, listen, I was listen, losing. listen, 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 listen. Your your lack of enthusiasm is because you are you are you have a lack of enthusiasm in yourself. Mm -hmm. You have a lack of enthusiasm in yourself. You because you explained that your 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 living arrangement changed, right? Where you're not at school anymore, you're back home. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I just Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So so the friends that you would usually brag to, they're not around, right? Yeah, exactly. So your entire fucking excitement was about your was truth was honestly about your friends. It wasn't really about you. But now that your friends are not around, all of a sudden you're losing enthusiasm. Right. Because check this out. You see how we say the game ain't about women. The game also ain't about your friends. And that's why you have losing enthusiasm because you were making the game about your friends. Because you needed their validation for you to feel like a winner. You see, you see how that works. I agree with, yeah. So whenever you make it anything outside of you, that's going to always be the issue. Caller, let me ask you a question, and please answer it honestly and quickly. Why do you like having sex with women? It feels good. Now, let me ask you another question. Does when you when you uh, when you beat your meat, does it feel good? Yeah. Okay, so there's no difference then, huh? I mean, yeah, there's no difference. I, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. There's no difference because if you know why you're doing it, then you would just fucking do it. Right. You don't need anyone to tell you yes or no. You don't need anyone to validate your shit, bro. Mm -hmm. So do the thing because you want to do it and only because you want to do it. You hear me? Right. Right. Exactly. And that, that's, and that's the problem. See, that's why you feel like, well, I'm not motivated anymore because you were never doing it for you. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's why that's the issue. You see what I'm saying? You were doing it to get validation from your boys. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because if you're doing, cause see, this is what, this is what we, I want you to understand about the game. You will always you will always have a desire or you can say the motivation, right? And even when you talk about motivation, motivation is just a feeling in the moment, but you'll still have that desire and the motivation to do certain things. If you understand the game is about you because you always check in with yourself and say, self, what do I want to do today? That's going to, you know, excite me. What is it? What am I going to do today? That's going to make me enjoy myself today. And then you do that thing. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times, you know, when people say they're bored, you know how people are bored? It's because they don't understand themselves. Mm. Because they don't know themselves. You <laughs> never really be bored if you know yourself because you understand what you can do, what you can access and what you can be and what you can feel and what you can, you know, experience in order to actually have a situation in that moment to, you know, experience basically. And mm. then you're not going to be bored. <laughs> right. like, to be stimulated or excited. Right. All right, caller. All right. Thank you guys for the insight. All right. Appreciate you, man. Take it easy, man. And uh, be true to yourself, man. Take it easy. All right. Mode one. All right. So we got 740-740. You're on live with Lucario and Miles. Name, Agent City. And did you cop a Alan Roger Curry book? 
William is my name. I am 34 years old and I am from Ohio. I have actually owned uh, five books from Alan Roger Curry for quite some time. You, you, actually, you uh, could, you could always tell the Alan Roger Curry fans time. because they call in with that fucking sexy phone voice. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is... Hey man, hey, when you, when, when you learn that stuff, it's hard to turn it off. You know what I mean? Like, Facts. I mean, it's very powerful. And to that past caller, I want to say, I think what you guys were telling that past caller was really awesome because it's, it's really not about validation from other people. It's about you, you know, so making sure that you're getting what you want out of life, basically at the end of the day. But I was just curious. I don't, I don't really have any questions for you guys. I was just actually curious about the situation. Do you guys know mm. any of the details about what happened to Alan or is it just, we know he died and that's it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know any of the details yet. So I don't think I'm not sure if any of the details came out yet, but I'm, I don't know any. So, you know, but we're, we're still waiting just like you guys are still waiting to see, but you know, or here. But uh, but yeah, we all know that he uh, he definitely passed away, but we're not sure exactly all the details yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and see, I, I I literally have been scouring the internet trying to figure out, you know, if like if it was a hoax or if it was like actually real. And from what I can tell, it's real. It's definitely sad to to lose somebody that was just so amazing like that and could actually just you know deliver the truth one of my favorite things that he would always say when he was talking shit to other people was give me your number and i'll call you and tell you directly right exactly. and that's just, that, like, it totally like encompasses his personality of just right. that in your face like i don't give a shit this is the truth you can like it you cannot like it i'm gonna roll on with it Right. That was it, fellas. Uh, good show today. Thank you very much. And uh, I appreciate all that you do. Thank you for carrying on his legacy. And and to anybody listening to my voice, go <coughs> buy Alan Roger Curry's books now. Facts. Facts. Real yeah. shit. Real shit. That's what we're talking about. Real, real talk. Real talk. All right. So we got uh, 718-877-718. You're on with Lucario and Miles. Name Agent City. What's up? Fellas, is me, Moses, man. How y'all doing? I'm chilling, man. What's going on with you? Yeah, man. You know, sad to hear Alan Roger Curry died, man. Rest in peace to the, to the brother, man. Yep, yep. You know, so I didn't, I did not really know too much about him, but I know he was a man that talked about direct and he being direct with women. You understand? Right. But his, his, uh, his, uh, uh thing i'm gonna say um lucario the last video that you made i didn't really get it i, I was gonna call in but you know i was busy mm. and so i didn't get a chance to call in mm. and the reason why i didn't call in is because you know i was uh actually dealing with a woman dealing with a shorty a little bit so i didn't have a chance i was like let me call you next time but okay. uh, here's, here's, here's um the last video uh mm. You, you pretty much man what you talked about you, you, you probably still just put that on a bad boy's membership i think that's Really good. Mm. On that, we said it again. The other video you made, I gotta look at them where women act like they like you. Oh yeah, pretending they like you, right? Yeah, pretending. Yes. So you know, I I'm, I think that's important to put on a membership as well. Mm. Yeah. You know what, what's your thoughts on that? To me, I find like that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I could get a little bit more deeper into that topic. You know what I mean? I mean, it just encompasses the whole concept of and again, this is this is why mode one was important, because if you have women pretending to like you. Right. Those are women who are basically what Alan Roger Curry talks about, manipulative time wasters. Those are women who don't really they're not really into you and they're just there to waste your time. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is that when you direct with women, it's hard for them to waste your time because you're letting them know exactly what you want to do so that they have to respond to that. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. And you're right. Because you, because here's the thing. I, I think I think I might I might deal with a shot. <laughs> because um this past Saturday night, you know, I'm out. I was at the bar, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I seen this cute chick because you know I put this one chick. I, like she was, she was flirting. You understand? We was making out and things like that. Mm -hmm. she, was me, she was telling me how sexy I am, how I was a ten and things like that. You understand? That all comes from me approaching. Mm -hmm. And then I was telling, I, I was trying to get her to smash that night, but her, her other friends. By the way, they were bad. Her other friends. They was kind of on the way, mm -hmm. so it was hard for me to pull it out. Now we, we exchanged numbers, and then I and then I was telling her about I'm trying to get together a hookup. She's like, cool, but she said. Hit me up when I'm ready to take her out to dinner. I'm like, nah, I'm not. I'm not taking you out to dinner. But here's what we could do: we could get together and hook up. You understand? She she said, cool. So, what what's your thoughts on that? 
So wait, so she said, yeah. me, when, you want to, when you want me to take you out, when you want to take me out to dinner, that's what that was her response. She like right after I said, uh, <laughs> get together at sex, but she like, yo, um, call her when I'm ready to take out. And then I said, no, no dinner, but I'll call you when I'm ready when I want to hook up. She said, okay, cool, mm. that. So uh, I'm like, nah, that. Nah. Well, just well then, just yeah, hit her up and 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 you know get her to come through so y'all can hook up. And if she's on any other thing besides that, then you just keep that shit pushing. That's it. You get it? Yeah, de- definitely, 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 definitely. De- I wanted to call because I mean that that the, the fact that you're talking about being direct, I was being direct. Mm. You understand? So, no, but that girl looked like she wanted to have sex with me there, like that. You understand that she was touching me, my face was kissing and everything like that. Mm. You understand? So that, that now I'm and now I see like why why I say be direct is very important. Because women will do these things, you understand, just to pretend <laughs> that they like you. Because what one last thing I'm one last thing I'm gonna say is these attention whores out there that goes to show, and I said it before and I'm gonna say it again. Attention whores, these attention whores are very sneaky. Mm. You understand? So if, if you're not direct, if your game is not tight, you will get caught up in their nonsense. That's what I wanted to say that. Exactly. So you, know, you should make a bad boy membership on that. That's, That's what's up, man. Well, appreciate the call, brother. We'll go deep on that. What's up? Appreciate it, brother. Appreciate you, Moses. All right. All right. Oh shit. I just you got any more calls? Yeah, we got we got a few more. Um we got uh eight five, I mean sorry, uh five five nine, five five nine. You're on live with Lucario and Miles, name Major City, and did you copy Alan Roger Curry book? Uh, what's up, man? This is T. Y'all know me. Uh, I had Alan Rogers Curry, uh, mode one. I read his book about four years ago. Got it sitting on my desk. Mm-hmm. I'm in traffic right now. Yeah, I've been had his book. Alan Roger Curry is a real thorough nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, love his perspective on the game. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to run some across you niggas and get y'all perspective. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I have Want to get y'all perspective on something? Now I had to. I got this. I got this freak that I met um, about two weeks ago. Now I've been back and forth out of town. You know what I mean for what I do for work. And um, I tapped in with the bitch maybe one time last week. Try to set a date, and uh, the bitch had to work on the date that I tried to set. So I let it go. <clears throat> let things get in the past. Now I called the bitch uh, last night, and I told her I tried to set a date for the bitch today. Now. This is where I agree with you niggas when y'all say, don't listen to what a bitch say. You know what I'm saying? And when you're talking to a bitch or texting her on the phone, get right to the point with a bitch. Set the date. Get off the phone with her. Now, check this out. So, I'm, I, I talked to the bitch last night, and I tell her, listen, what you doing tomorrow? Woo, woo, woo. Pull up on me. I didn't tell her about going to no dates, spending no money. Listen, pull up on me. When you get off of work, what time you get off? Okay, pull up on me. Now, look what the bitch tell me. She sit up there and tells me this is a 32 year old bitch. She got she got one kid. Now the bitch is I give her about a seven. This is what she tell me. She say, listen, I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Every time you I talk to you on the phone, you want to just hurry up, set a date. You make make one or you know what I'm saying two three minutes of small talk and you set a date and all that. I say, why you don't like that? Because well, most guys. You know what I mean? They like to, they like, they'll talk to me and woo, woo, woo. And I say, well, I'm not most guy. You know what I mean? And then so the bitch, yeah, well, I don't like, you know what I'm saying? End up, she set the day with me anyway. And uh, she going to pull up on me tonight anyway. Now, I just wanted to get y'all thoughts mm. on that because most niggas will sit up there and start calling a bitch or texting the bitch. Oh, let me, let me do what the bitch wants. She don't like it. I don't want to lose her. So let me, you know what I'm saying? Copy what the bitch wants. I get right to the point with it. I want to know what y'all thoughts is on that. Right. Well, I'll say this is that um, just understand anytime, I always say this, anytime there's resistance, it's a form of disinterest. So even though she's coming through, just understand that you 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 might have to pull some teeth you understand? <laughs> in this situation because she's already showing you she's uncooperative from the jump. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is where Kevin Samuels has some on the money, too. When, uh, damn, I just fucked. Oh, oh, yeah. When he talked about bitches in that age group where a bitch might be bitter, she's a little older, bitch already 32, got got a kid already and all that. 
he calls that the danger zone. That's where I agree with him on that. I know you niggas understand that that part of the game too. You know what I mean? So hey, hey listen, get, hey, listen, T, listen, bro. Here, here's here's what it is. Here's what it is. As soon as the bitch come through, make sure you make sure you let her know what it is. Make sure you don't you don't make sure the TV's off. Make sure it ain't nothing to distract her from from getting down and sucking dick. You understand what I'm saying? That's what you need to focus on. All right. Yeah, I get right to the point with it. Yeah, get right to it. Because yeah, uh, as soon as you start talking, she's going to find every reason to not do what she came there to do. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Check this out, Miles. The first conversation I had with this bitch, she was describing to me about, you know, she seemed kind of bitter and she was describing to me about her baby daddy and some Oh, other my God. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, see. No, 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 no. God, I talk. Huh? I can't hear you. <laughs> No, no, I was going to say this. I was going to say this. See, in these situations, like Miles was saying, you got to get, you got to stay focused and do what you got to do because <clears throat> what happens is that women like this, when they, when they have that sort of like medium type of interest in you, when they're going back and forth, they're talking all this other stuff. What happens is they can get you so caught up in, in conversation and nonsense if you're not careful. And then you send, you end up wasting your time having all this 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 small talk conversation going back and forth and shit never gets gets hey hey, exactly. hey that, that conversation right that first conversation where she was talking about her baby dad and her bitterness how long was that conversation about three minutes we was in the laundry mat got her number and got the fuck up out of there i listened to her, i said okay listen i gotta run i left my clothes in the washer i gotta get up out of here what's your number boo 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 got it got up out of there and that's what she said she didn't like about me Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, well, stay yeah. focused, bro. Stay on the game, stay focused, and uh, and you know, and good luck. All right, bro. All right, my nigga, go ahead. All right, take it easy, man. Yo, that nigga want to be down so bad. <laughs> so bad. Oh my god. Uh, 818, 818, you on live with Lucario and Miles. Name Agent City, and did you copy Alan Roger Curry book? Yeah, what's up, guys? Um, I'm my name's Ron, um, 38 from Cali, and um, yeah, I, I got all of Roger's books. Uh, mm -hmm. I started in, in order, um, from the beta males and talk, you know, all of them. I got all of them. Um, mm -hmm. and again, it's all thanks to you, Mr. Locario, because you brought him into my life. I know that sounds funny, but it's true. <laughs> um, <clears throat> You brought up, you, know, you you um, brought him in, and his guidance is, and wisdom is is off the chain. Like I I, I loved it, uh, uh, and it's just like shocking to me. You know, shocked to all of us that all of a sudden he's gone, mm -hmm. and it's just another um, uh, point that you know life is short. You never know what's gonna happen. You know, you're here and then you're gone. And my thing is appreciate your mentors. You know, all, all some of this stupid shit where, you know, you're, you're getting bullshit, you know, from passport bros or whomever. Mm -hmm. It's just stupid, you know, just silly, nonsensical stuff. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you and um, Miles and, you know, Steve Dean, all you guys, all the Game Kings and so many more for what you guys do because, um, you know, stuff like this. Uh, a lot of fathers, they don't teach this facts to, mm. to their boys. Right. You know I mean, so there's a lot. That's why there's a lot of lost men out here. That's why the same old mistakes happen over and over and things just don't get better. And if anything, you know, unfortunately, things just get worse. And um, but it's guys like you, you guys that, um, you know, are there to, you know, slap us in the face and be like, wake the fuck up. Mm -hmm. I know to a lot of dudes, this is tough, but you know what? Because of Roger's advice, it, it was hard for me too, but I, I, I did this, uh, where I, I was at a 99 cent store. There was a girl in there while I was shopping. And she just caught my eye. I have never done this in my life until I was just listening to ARC. I mm -hmm. straight up told her, listen, I, I think, you know, Pulled it to the side, said, "Excuse me, but I have to tell you something. You know, you look, you look good. I know you get that a lot from 
Oh shit, this nigga Miles just cut off. <laughs> Shout out to my dude 1950 in the chat. <laughs> Shout out to 1950 in the chat. He says RIP to ARC. Yeah, Miles just cut off and shit. I don't know what happened. The, the, the internet games got him. The internet guys got him for for a second. <laughs> he just he pressed the button or something. But let me let me answer some of these questions real quick. Uh, as uh, Miles is probably you know setting his shit back up. You feel what I'm saying? Um, so this one says, our mode one and Usaid again, ARC must read. Yes, all of it is must read. Make sure that you guys uh, go and get it. That's why I, I put the link at the top of the um, of the chat. So you can click on there, go straight to uh, Amazon and shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, let's get Miles back on here. What, what happened? <laughs> I, yo, my computer just, I don't know, bro. It just restarted all on its fucking own. I really don't know. That's crazy. Uh, Caller, are you still there? Is the is the um is the is the block talk still on? The block talk. Oh, oh. everything's reconnecting. Take it easy. Okay, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> uh, hey, all right, caller. Hey, man, we appreciate you, bro. All right, three one four, three one four. Uh, you you on live with Lucario and Miles? Name it your city, and did you buy an Alan Roger Curry book? I can't hear nothing, dude. Is he talking? Yeah, I hear him. You can't hear him? I can't hear shit. Can you, can you guys hear? Can you guys hear in the chat? I don't hear nothing. Let me let me. Oh shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> she cut off again. Oh, let me let me let me pull up the Skype number. Let me pull up the Skype real quick. So just just in case. Yeah, we can't hear shit. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Okay, we your mouse keep cutting out. That's crazy. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna pull up the Skype number, and then you guys could probably call in through the Skype while Miles is trying to get that together. Well, let me see. Miles come back on. All right, listen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me make sure. uh, Let me make sure my shit is on right with the roadcaster. All right, roadcaster, roadcaster, boom. All right, caller, caller, three one four. You still there? Can you hear him now, Lucario? No, nah, I can't hear him. I can't hear him at all. I don't think that the uh the, the uh, people in the chat can hear either. They said he wasn't hearing them. Oh my god. I know. So you probably you probably gotta uh cut it off and then and the, the block talk and then restart it or some shit. All right. Yeah, yeah I, try- I, I can call her. I can hear you, bro, but uh the show can't hear you, so I'm gonna have to cut everything off. Listen, uh hold on, eight five seven and six four six. Matter of fact, I'm gonna just mute myself from this. Yeah, so uh, so guys, I'm gonna put up. Hold on, I'm gonna put up the uh, the other number. And while Miles is doing that, we could um, we could probably do the other number. Let me put up the other number real quick, so we could get this shit going. Hold on. All right, so so guys, try to call into that number for right now while Miles is um getting that together. You feel what I'm saying? And then we could we could you know keep this going. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So, guys, call in 646-481-3901. Call in that number for right now. You feel what I'm saying? And then we could get that pop in. So, the guys who are on the other call, just call into this number and see. And we could try to get that going until Miles uh, puts up the other number again. But, yeah, man. Um, let me see if I can answer some more of these questions real quick as we're getting that together. It says, how often does Mode 1 work? Mode 1 works all the time. See, again, either if you approach a girl and you want to hook up with her, you want to have sex with her, you're letting her know exactly what you want. She's either going to be like, yes or no. So if she says, yes, it worked because she said yes until you made it happen. Or if she says, no, it worked because now you waste no time with that particular woman. Let me try to do a, um, I'm going to try to pick up this fo- phone call from, uh, let me try 857. 857, what's popping? What's going on? It's a respect to respect to the panel, respect to this little car, respect to miles. Uh, yeah. Just to just to uh, come through with the, the title while being direct is always important. Mm-hmm. And I I agree, but honestly, sometimes being direct at another point can come off as being thirsty. Mm-hmm. And and the reason why I say that is because a lot of men are lying to themselves, saying telling these women that they just want sex. A lot of men kind of just want love. You feel me? 
So it's like, if you're coming off, as, just like one of the last callers just said, he just told a random shorty he want to eat her pussy. He, she's like, what the fuck? Like, she walked away. He just said that. Like, that's coming off as thirstiness. Well, not necessarily, because the thing is, thirstiness implies that you're basically trying to consistently get at a woman who's telling you no. So if you say to a girl, hey, I want to do this, and she says no, and you say, okay, cool, and you walk away, that's not thirsty because you're just letting her know what you want. You see what I'm saying? You're telling her what you want to do. Now, if she says no, and then you keep trying to get at her, then that's being thirsty. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, right. so letting a woman know what you want to do is never, never a thirsty thing. It's only thirsty when you're consistently trying to make it happen, and she's telling you, "I'm not trying to make it happen." You feel what I'm saying? But also, if you want, if you're like, if you're like, "Hey, I want something more than sex," and you're telling a woman you want sex, then you're just be, you're not being genuine. You're being disingenuous. So, so if you're saying that guys are looking for love or whatever that's supposed to mean but then they're asking for sex or trying to get sex, then that means they're being disingenuous or they're being a liar. You feel what I'm saying? I feel that. I feel that. So you're saying basically, if you're looking for, if you ask a shorty that you're looking for, like that you're looking for love for, like you're looking for love from her. So basically you're looking for love and you don't want sex right away. So you're not going to ask for sex on the first date type shit. That's not, what do you call that? Well, first of all, I don't even think you should be looking for love in the first place. But what I'm saying is if you're not just looking for sex, right? And if that's not what you want, then you just tell her what you want. So you say, hey, listen, I want to take you out on a date and get to know you, right? That's still you being direct about what you want to do. You see what I mean? Exactly. Right. That's all That's all it's about. Nah, big facts. Keep Appreciate, appreciate the games. Appreciate y'all. All right, bro. Appreciate the call, man. Ooh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, blog talk be the dumbest the way they got oh, shit. Bro, blog, is blog talk good or is it like still acting funny? It's acting funny because it, the other episode is still running behind oh, the scene. Yeah, I hate when that shit happened. Yeah, that's that's the shit that be killing me with that. All right, let me take this call real quick on here. Uh, Just keep taking the calls and that shit. Fuck it, because right. it's almost it's almost over. Almost done. Yeah, so we'll go uh, six uh, six four six on the line. What's popping? Who's this? Six four six. Shia Brooklyn. Oh, oh shit. Oh. Shit. Shia, what's going on, bro? <laughs> I'm good. Just here to support. Um, I don't have any of his books, but you know, obviously, I know about him. Get so the books, to, nigga. Uh, go on, go on, go on Amazon. Get the book right now. I'm giving you <laughs> the hand clap and the horn to motivate you to go online right now and get the book. We got the, the link at the top. But go ahead. What's popping with you, man? But um, yeah, now nah, I'm just here to, to to give thanks for the game. I appreciate all of the the knowledge I've learned over the years, and I just want to share one thing. Um, well, let me ask a question first, and then I'm gonna share one thing. Mm. You talked about in a re- previous video mm. about a woman, a reason a woman would lie to you. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember, right? And you said like if you're approaching her being dishonest. Mm-hmm. Or you know you not actually not being direct, then she's gonna lie because mm-hmm. she's reflecting you. Right. So I mean, I've in my experience, like a woman will lie also if she's not feeling you, or if she mm-hmm. feels like you're like you're not leading properly. Like she's just gonna make up stuff because she doesn't want to. She's not interested anymore. So mm-hmm. would you agree with that? Yeah, but that's that's what I'm saying. Like that's gonna all of those lies happen as a direct mm-hmm. result of her not really following your lead, but also mm-hmm. it'll happen as a direct result of you starting out lying. You see what I'm saying? So like, okay, for example, right? Like, let's say I meet a girl, right? And and she, like, you know, most guys don't literally ask her or her body count in most cases. But let's say, just take argument, I'm having a conversation or interaction where I'm trying to figure out her sexual activities or her sexual past or whatever. Or we have a conversation about like exes and all this other stuff, right? What will happen is, is that she might lie to me mm-hmm. about how much she been fucking because collectively how men act when they deal with women when it comes to, uh, you know, sex and, and having that conversation, you see what I'm saying? So her lying to me is a result of how men have been acting funny style based off of a woman's sexual past. You see what I'm saying? Now, if I'm the type of dude 
who's a real motherfucker and who's honest with this chick and who's who who's a leader and who lets her know, hey, listen, all I'm really uh, concerned about is if you're following my lead and I'm going to let you know what it is. I'm going to let you know what I'm about and I'm going to be real with your ass. Right. And what happens is, is that that lowers her guard. So then now she doesn't have to lie. See, when what, usually what happens is lies occur in most cases because the person's trying to hide something. The mm. reason why they're trying to hide something because there's a certain fear there or there's a certain thing that they don't want to, to occur, which is why they lie. Just like how a person has a mm. fake ID. Why? Because they're under 21. Because if they, the person knows the truth, then it's not they're not going to get the thing that they want. You feel what I'm saying? But mm. if they were over 21, Nobody over 21 needs to have a fake ID because it doesn't make any sense. Why would you need to lie? You don't need to because you're over 21. You see what I'm saying? And you're, and you're able to get the thing going. So what happens is that a lot of times when women are lying, it's from them having to lie based off of all of the shit they had to lie about because collectively the interactions that they're having with men in these situations prompt them to do that. Now, when they meet a man who is not a liar and who is honest and who is a leader, then she says, oh my God, finally, I don't have to fucking lie anymore with this nigga. I don't have to, I don't have to do that. But a lot of times the lies will come off the rip because she's still coming off the energy of having to lie, dealing with all these other niggas. You see what I'm saying? So based off the guy that you are, right, your influence can cause her <laughs> to respond and react differently than how she would with other men. This is why when a lot of guys talk about all this pair bonding shit and all this other nonsense, they they forget or they don't realize that the reason why they think the woman can't pair bond is because they don't they they think that they don't actually have any influence over a woman and most of them don't if you're going to be honest. You know what I'm saying this which is why which is why it's an issue. You see what I mean? Okay, yeah, cool. I um, appreciate that explanation. Right. Um, yeah, thank you. Just one quick thing I'd like to share about rejection because um I was watching this video on YouTube. It was actually a pastor and he was talking about the title was You Have an Appointment for Failure. Mm. And he was talking about the fact that there's a time and a date where you're gonna fail, so you should expect it to happen mm. and how it relates back to, you know, dating mm. and things like that and manhood is that when you look at rejection, initially when you unexperienced, it may seem as a bad thing, but that's actually a blessing, obviously, because you can extract a lesson from it. Right, right. And it may be the God saying, hey, listen, that's this is not the person for you. You deserve somebody better. Mm -hmm. Or they could be avoiding, you know, you could be avoiding a bad situation. So mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes it's important to have like a positive perspective on rejection Mm. Where it's like, listen, you deserve something better. Even if you fail in a relationship, listen, you learned the lesson. You, like you have to do it, go through that to learn the lesson. Like there's no other way for you to learn it mm. if you don't feel it. Like, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, exactly. So, and so I, I think it's important for, for people to think like that. Because I know initially, you know, obviously for me, I looked at it as something bad. I don't want to experience it. But then now over time, as I go through it more, I see like the positives in it and I just, you know, keep it moving. Cause now I, I recently got out of something and now I'm making more money. I'm more focused on myself. I'm more, I'm accomplishing more because a relationship didn't work out. Well, it wasn't a relationship we were dating, but I'm accomplishing more because of it. Yeah. And reality, you know, it, it's going to be better for me because, you know, I realize with men and women, a man can generally get over things, you know, if he's serious and put it in the past. But a woman generally, even though she's rejecting you, they tend to hold on to a lot of things. So it usually eats them up inside long, you know, over time in way, like you said, they had that energy towards other men because of the past 15 men they've been with. So it usually is harder for them to come back from usually, usually. So you know, men, you know, men, men have an advantage. They just need to see themselves as, as a, as a winner as, and as a person that can leave, overcome anything and, and just get better. Like that's it. That's what's up, man. Well, we appreciate you, brother. Appreciate the call, man. We gonna holler at you, man. Appreciate it, bro. 
All right, so guys, call the number 646-481-3901, 646-481-3901. So we got like 15 minutes left, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, so if you're going to call in, call in. If you got a question, put a Q in the chat, and we will get to your question. All right, um, this one says, is it a hindrance to need and want for nothing? What? I have no idea what that even means. You got to call up, bro. Like, How is that a hindrance? What are you talking about? Um, can a woman not like you and have sex with you for months? Absolutely. She can just be sexually attracted to you and not, <laughs> not like you as a person, not really like you overall. You feel what I'm saying? That's the misconception a lot of guys have. They think that, see, a woman would prefer to fuck the guy she likes, like she actually likes this guy overall. But, right. you know, if she's just horny and she's sexually attracted to him, she'll, she'll do him. You feel what I'm saying? So that'll happen also. You feel what I mean? Uh, what's a good way to respond to I'm not that type of girl when you try to hook up or should you just leave it alone? Well, yeah, that's basically what remember, remember what I said. Always add with you at the end of the sentence. I'm not the type of girl with you. <laughs> well, I mean, so so that, that gives you the answer right there. She's basically saying I'm not interested in you like that. Right. You see what I mean? And so what happens is that when a woman says she's not interested in you like that, you understand, well, I don't got to waste no more time with this chick. I can move on. See, y'all got to understand a lot of this stuff is it's very it's good because it shows you what the next step is. Right. Like a lot of guys say, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. What should I do next? Her response already tells you what it is. You understand what I'm saying? Like, remember this? Hi, how are you doing? You think I give a fuck about how you doing, bitch? All I want you to motherfucking do is open your mouth and say something so I can hear how your voice sounds so it can tell me how the fuck to get at you. Exactly. <laughs> That's what that means. So if I tell a chick, listen, um, you know, come through so we could get it in. And she's like, I'm not that type of girl. All right. Well, peace. You, you know, good luck. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We're done here. That's it. She's already let me know she ain't, she ain't down and we could, we could keep it moving. It's really that simple. Um, so this one says, uh, Miles, is your line, will anyone have a problem with us getting a drink, a direct or indirect approach if your goal is to get sex? Well, you guys need to understand that my goal is to go out and have a drink. Right. <laughs> That's my goal. I don't have an issue getting sex. Mm. So you have to understand that when I say that, my goal is to not have sex. So if your goal is to have sex, don't use my fucking line. Right, right. You understand? Know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. the, it, it's everything is in the line. Right. You, the, 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 it's, a, it's a direct invitation for a drink. Right, exactly. Because my dick is such a gift. Dick is a gift. Right? That I can't just offer it to every bitch. So mm -hmm. she needs to go through a filtering process first. We right. need to sit down and have a talk. I need to see where her head is at. Exactly. When I, whenever I see a chick, it, it, most times it ain't never just about sex with me. Mm -hmm. Because I've realized that I can't... At, at this age, my dick don't get up for everything, bro. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my dick be like, nah, nigga, I'd rather sleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, my, my, my dick... Will, my, I'll, I'll be like, yo, dick... Like, yo, you ever seen this nigga on fucking on TikTok? And he goes, yo, cheetah. And then the, and it, it's a fucking mupp Muppet cheetah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. He goes, what's up? And then they do some cooking shit. That's right. what I'm saying. I'd be like, yo, dick. And my dick be like, what's up? Right. And I'd be like, what you think of this bitch over here we having drinks with? Right. And he's like, I don't like that bitch. I'm going to sleep. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, and once he says, I don't like that bitch, I'm going to sleep, there's nothing I can do. Mm-hmm. And so, I, for example, one time I went out on a, on a, on a date with a chick <clears throat> and we started talking about like work and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I mentioned the masculine identity membership and the bitch started giggling. Oh, my God. Once she did that, it was like it was like. Right. It was like <laughs> she even called me. She even hit me up the following week. Mm -hmm. Got to set something up because she wanted to smash, and I was, I was like, I made other plans. Right, exactly. It's like I can't, I can't with you. I you understand? And so you know, guys, don't you don't be using my line 
my line is, di- is my line is direct, but it's direct for my purposes. Right. And, See, that, and that's the point. Y'all, I got to understand this. It's not about using the lines that we're telling you. We're just giving you examples of what we would do in these situations or what we do in these situations because it pertains to us specifically. Exactly. So you have to come up with things that pertain to you specifically. You see what I'm saying? So that it could work for you. That's that's the point. You see what I mean? Hold on, let me get one of these calls real quick. Um, so yeah, so again, don't just be taking lines and thinking it's the line that makes the difference. It's the guy who's saying the line. You feel what I'm saying? That's the point. But 818, what's popping? What's going on with you? 818. Yes, sir. What's going on? Um, not just uh was saying. Uh, thank you guys. Thank Roger. Uh, I know that you had com- bad phone line on my part, I guess. But uh, just wanted to say again, uh, thank you to you, Mr. Locario, mm. for get- for bringing in uh, ARC mm. into my life and for his knowledge and wisdom. And um, again, life is short. Uh, appreciate your mentors to everyone out there who's listening. Mm. Um, I know that sounds funny, but at the same time, it's true because you know, I was shocked. I was shocked to hear that, you know, what happened to mm. him. Mm. But, you know, uh, life is short. And I appreciate my mentor's advice. Because, uh, you know, fathers, they don't they don't talk to this to their to their boys, like I said before. Mm. But um, just, you know, just giving you guys, you know, your roses and also ARC, you know, it's it cigars, sir, like, cigars, you know, sir. Life. We don't we don't give flowers over here. We give cigars. Right. <laughs> All right, that's even better. <laughs> right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. All right, brother. Pre- appreciate it. Appreciate it. Look, look, this is the thing I was talking about. Oh, wait, I gotta turn it up. I left you cheetah. What's up? You seen that shit before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to make some lasagna and I need you. Ayo cheetah. What's up? <laughs> Yo, that nigga got 1.4 million followers on TikTok, bro. <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> this says uh how how to give off more sexual energy uh when approaching. Get the book mode one. Exactly. Facts. <laughs> Real shit. Real shit. Yo, I'm serious. Listen to them first couple of callers. What are you like? Hey girl, you know what? Right. I put my dick inside you, girl. You know you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So what if she's a prostitute and only sex for money with no exceptions? How can I get it for free uh using game? Well then if you if if she's sexy attracted to you, then she'll fuck you. You understand that? <laughs> that's straight, that's basically what it is. You know what I mean? So Women, women who 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 uh who are whores also fuck men for free. You know, you know what I'm saying? That? So you gotta be careful, bro, because <laughs> if you fuck the girl and she don't charge you, and then her pimp come around asking for that. <laughs> <money>. <laughs> oh man, that'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. Oh my goodness. But um, but yeah, man, I think that's the end of the questions. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so I mean, we, we almost around that time anyway. So yeah, wrap it up a little bit. So like, guys, listen, man, you know, it's it's a sad thing that that uh, Al Roger Cray passed, but you know, it's part of life, and just you know, I'm glad that we were able to experience the teachings and the lessons that he put out there, and and you know, I feel like he, you know, he was on a mission. He. He, you know, completed the mission. You feel what I'm saying? He right. let the world know what it is. He changed a lot of men's lives. So, you know, we definitely appreciate our brother. You feel what I'm saying? Real, shit. Real fucking shit. Yo, man. It's look. Oh, you want to do this other one? So what to say to a girl if she says, I let you know. Oh, no. Just listen. <laughs> charge. Yeah. You have the charges to the game. Or you give her a deadline. So she says, I'll let you know. Okay, cool. Hit me back in an hour to let me know if you're free for Friday. That's how you do it. Mm-hmm. Right. What was you going to say, Miles? What was I going to say? I, I, I don't really know. Oh, uh, something about dying and how life is short and 
Um, like like these dudes are saying, man, appreciate your mentors, man. Right. Like, look, guys, li listen, listen. The reason why I know that what we say is valuable is because a big reason why I do this is because when I was a, of a certain age, I wish there was guys saying exactly what I'm saying. Right. Exactly. Right. Do you understand? Like when I really when I say the things that I say, I'm really thinking of younger miles. That's what I, that's who I'm thinking of when I say these things. Mm -hmm. You understand? I'm thinking of my nephew. You understand? So, <clears throat> you know, I know, you know, I know you guys like you, you, you guys might look at the memberships. You'd be like, oh, these guys are trying to make money and it's expensive and da 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 da. But I, I want to say something real quick. Right. You have to understand that there is a level of game within the responsibility of maintaining these memberships. And I might have mentioned this before. Right. But there's a level of game within the responsibility of maintaining these memberships. You see, <clears throat> when we say the game is to be sold, not told, it's not just about actually selling the game. Mm. It is about maintaining a level of consistency mm -hmm. that 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 allows you to afford ninety seven dollars a month. Right. Or whatever the cost is. Mm -hmm. When you when you in, when you invite a bitch over to net, Netflix and chill, don't you have to pay thirteen ninety nine a month to Netflix? Right, right. You don't bat a fucking eye when when you click when you click the fucking remote and you turn on the TV so you and the bitch can watch movies instead of fuck like you really want to because you're too scared to tell her you want to fuck. Right, right. When you invite a bitch over to your house and you and you cut the lights on, you don't bat an eye paying your fucking electric bill. Mm -hmm. You don't even when you invite her to your apartment that you pay rent in every fucking month. You don't bat an eye to, to invite her back to your apartment. Right. Right. Because there's a certain level of consistency that goes with maintaining a job, maintaining your health. Everything that you need to do to make it to work the next day so you can stay on point, stay productive and pay your fucking bills. Mm -hmm. So understand that. Other than the business aspect of the memberships and why they cost a certain amount of money per month, mm -hmm. there is a level of game built in. Because it, it, it teaches you, it keeps you consistent, right? It keeps you on top of your fucking game so you can afford access to this information month after month after month after month. Right. And Just, all, shout and out all. to Roger Curry. He never he never did none of this shit for free. Exactly. You understand? Like a part a big part of his story was um talking with his brother, and his brother was like, Bro, you I, his brother watched him get so much fucking pussy, and he was like, Bro, you need to you need to bottle this up and sell it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, bro, if you want to afford the information that comes naturally to me, you're going to have to show some type of respect and effort and energy. Mm. You have to put something out value for value. Exactly. Shout out to Coach EO on that. Mm. But you, got, you have to put out some type of effort if you want to show a level of consistency in yourself. Forget, See, y'all niggas think that you, you're paying us the money. That's not really what's happening. Mm. That's not really what's happening. You are finding a reason to be productive month after month after month. So you may, so you can maintain a level of lifestyle for yourself mm -hmm. and what, wh whichever women you're trying to fucking attract out here. Right. That's what it's really about. That's what you guys don't see with the game. This is what you don't understand. And when, when we tell you, you got to make the game about you, mm -hmm. it's not about the $97. It's about the ability to be able to afford the $97 or however much money it is, however much your rent is, however much the Netflix is, however much the cable is and, and the fucking electric electric bill and your internet bill and your phone bill. It is the ability to maintain the level and then to also not only maintain the level, but exceed the level. Right. And on top of that, you know what it is, too, is is it's also the understanding of the energy and the give and take in the game, because in order for you to be able to keep your apartment, you have to give your time to your job in order to get the money to keep the apartment. Exactly. In order, in order for you to stay fit, you got to give your time to the gym and eat right in order to get that fit body. You see what I'm saying? In order for you to 
get that girl that you want, you got to give yourself time to learn how to be that attractive man that the women want. So when they say the game is to be sold, that statement within itself is teaching you about the game, meaning that in order for you to get, you have to give. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way. It's always a balance. There's no, there's no if ands or buts about it. Exactly. It's always a balance. And so what happens is a lot of guys, what they're trying to do is you're trying to cheat the game. You're trying, you're trying to get the 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 the, the fit body without having to work out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to get the money without having to work for it. You're trying to get the girl without having to become the guy the girl wants. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It don't work that way. And so understanding how it works, where there's the give and the take, gets you to understand it. In order for me to be able to get this thing, I have to give something. Exactly. Whatever that something is, you have to figure it out in order to get the thing you want. Exactly. Really and, that's, and that's exactly why we're raising the fucking price. Right. That's exactly why we're raising the price. Mm-hmm. Because we're we're looking for those guys who can who can meet the, the meet the um the requirements but also exceed the fucking requirements exactly who can maintain the consistency on a higher level mm-hmm. like bro what the fuck do y'all really think this masculinity shit is right what do y'all really think this is mm-hmm. we we fucking run the world we control the world men mm-hmm. do you understand we we fucking build the fucking all the, the machines and the goddamn roads and the bridges and yo, I saw this fucking TikTok with these dudes. They was running a, a, a drill compress in one of those fucking um refinery oil refinery things in the middle of the ocean, and these niggas was covered in grease, mm-hmm. moving around these big fucking clamps and switching them around and and then and the, the fucking piston was dropping up and down. And at any given time, any one of these niggas could slip, fall, and their, their head could get caught under the piston and fucking get crushed like nothing. Mm-hmm. And these are the type of jobs that niggas do. Right. Do you know what type of consistency of and focus that you need to, to do jobs like that? You know you need to go home and fucking sleep and get a good six to eight hours of sleep so you could be fresh and focused and alert enough to do a job like that every single day without getting yourself killed? Mm-hmm. It takes real fucking shit out here to be to to be to be productive. Right. And the problem and the problem is I and we always try to tell y'all niggas. We are not, we are on social media. We are not of social media. Right. Facts. <laughs> all you niggas asking for receipts and all this shit. Right. All the reason why you asking for receipts is because of social media. It's because you see everybody else posting some shit on social media. Right. When, when, when niggas was back in the day in the, in the fucking barbershop talking about how they smashed some shorty last week, did anybody in the fucking barbershop say, yo, man, I, I got to see some pictures, see some receipts. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't fuck shorty. I got to see receipts. Nah, you just could tell by the way the nigga was talking that more than likely he probably fucked that bitch. Right, and, all, and the reason why you didn't need to ask him for, res- for receipts is because you was also fucking women so you understood when a nigga was fucking women exactly. because, because see you don't you don't ask to see niggas receipts that they got a job because you got a job you don't ask to see niggas receipts when they ate dinner last night because you ate dinner last night you don't ask them to see niggas receipts when they watch the movie on netflix because you watch the movie on netflix notice how the things that you don't ask receipts for are the things that you're doing also so what happens is when a dude is asking for receipts, what he's saying is, I don't believe you because I haven't done it. That's hey. all he's saying. You see hey. what I mean? That's all it is. <laughs> and, you see what I'm saying? And shout out to ARC because ARC was talking about that too. ARC was like, look, these guys talking about all this shit, but he was basically saying, look, this is, these are the things I've done. ARC wasn't out here, oh, let me show you the receipt that showed you. No. Because the game, right? Dudes, game recognize game. Dudes who understand the game understand why you shouldn't even be showing receipts like that in the first place. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's fucking crazy. But yeah, man. So guys, understand that this game is real, man. The game is 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 you know something that you guys need to take heed to so that you can improve your shit. Mm-hmm. 
saying? That's why it's here. It's here for you to improve yourself. This is why, you know, Alan Roger Curry has books that's left behind. It's going to live on. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? To, for, for years and years and years down the line. You feel what I'm saying? That's going to help even more men. You feel what I mean? So that's that's what it is, man. But um, anything else you want to say, Miles, before we wrap it up? Mode one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the big homie, Alan Roger Curry, man. Rest in peace. Rest in power, man. Shit. Exactly. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah, nigga. It's almost over. That's all I'm saying, man. It's almost over, nigga. There's, there's only so much vegetable juice I could drink. Right, right. There's only so many times that I could walk through the park and spit game to y'all niggas. Mm-hmm. Y'all, niggas y'all niggas better hold on to the... Yo, Patrice O'Neal, gone. Mm-hmm. Kevin Samuels, gone. Alan Roger Curry, gone. Mm-hmm. Real niggas is dropping like flies, bro. Right. All that's going to be left is a bunch of butt hurt blaming blame it on the women type niggas for y'all to listen to i'm sorry <laughs> right yo shout out to Twi- taekwondo for one of the young niggas coming up in the game but thanks <laughs> it's almost over man it's almost fucking over soon you gonna hit the, n- the niggas yo dave Chappelle got fucking lung cancer and died like mm. it's almost over bro Right. Look, when I'm out, don't cry for me, nigga. Just, just watch my shit. Mm-hmm. When I, when I'm out, don't cry for me. Just clip my shit and mm-hmm. make sure that shit live on forever, exactly. so these young niggas can hear a real nigga talk. Because after niggas like me is out of here, mm-hmm. I feel it's sorry for y'all niggas, bro. It's a wrap. I feel, ooh, I feel sorry for y'all niggas. Whoa, mm-hmm. I feel sorry for y'all niggas. All y'all gonna have is a bunch of, yo, man. These women don't know how to make men happy no more, man. Right. Yo, man, yo, man, it's her body count. Her body count too high. Right. That's what she can't pair bond, bro. <laughs> and listen, man, you don't want to get married because she going to take you through the court system. Right, exactly. That's right. And you know bitches get pregnant on their own. You know what I'm saying? When a bitch get pregnant, it ain't got nothing to do with you, homie. Right, exactly. That's what y'all going to hear. All y'all going to have, bro. Mm-hmm. That's all y'all gonna have, and then y'all gonna then y'all gonna be frustrated and start shooting up Walmart. You know what? Let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> oh man! But yo, man, real talk, man. Shout out ARC. ARC lives on forever through the game. You feel me? So we appreciate y'all, man. We holler at y'all later. Remember, the truth is inside you. Peace. We gone. We out. Later. When it comes to being a man, it's about being that rock. It's about being stable. So first, you're going to have to find discipline within yourself. Do you have that type of discipline? Do you even have the heart to be ruthless? Women need leadership. It is in their nature to seek out leadership. You know, you can't do a 99 because all that's part of a man. You got to do a 100. Apparently, these women out here having sex with somebody. Apparently, they're getting pregnant with somebody. (laughs) Shoot, somebody getting something. You should look at something like hypergamy and allow it to inspire you to always be evolving, getting better, expanding, developing. There are things you know, the things you don't know. Then there are things you don't know you don't even know. There can be 10 of us in one room and there's one question. And there's 10 correct answers, all different.